really father when my day come. I'ma have a gun when my day come. They say that I'm the one these niggas wanna rent from. Can't let them shine on me. I keep that eye on me. Dear Heavenly Father, when my day come. I'ma have a gun when my day come. They say that I'm the one these niggas wanna rent from. Can't let them shine on me. Chasing on the white books, cause you think you need a swag. He ain't never gonna fight your ass to do by. He races on the low, don't believe that lie. Bring that mix, baby, on you, make your mama cry. He say nigga once, then I'm up in that fire. Why that black girl? Talking to the white boys, why that black girl? Talking to the white boys, why that black girl? Talking to the white boys. You gon' make your daddy mad. You gon' make your daddy mad. You gon' make your daddy mad. And we used to be slaves Girl, you got your ancestors rolling in their grave I really think you playing and our prayers is the face We can't say that girl, she ain't trying to be safe Why the hell your ass out here sucking white dick? Why are all the niggas out here chasing white chicks? Gotta bend the man cause it's all by design Wiping out a race, we just gotta give it time Why that black girl? Talking to them white boys Why that black girl? Talking to them white boys Why that black girl? Talking to them white boys You gon' make your daddy mad You gon' make your daddy mad You gon' make your daddy mad I don't care if my mama mad, got a white chick, fit thighs and a fat ass. I don't care if my mama get upset, got a white chick, sucking dick, give a stupid neck. If it's snowing, I ain't going, got a white girl horn, and you know I got the money in the field torn. PAT still flowing, got a white girl snoring, and you show you sucking dick, and she still snoring. Wow, that's crazy. I told you, I told you, I told you we'd be deathless. We just need new shells from time to time. And plenty of souls to eat. It's just the law. Uh, black people are slaves and white people own them. That's just the way it is. How's that digging? How's that digging, Chili? Ow! Oh, Reb. Hello, Chief. Hello. (אומר 
great grand holy mother of all divine, the source of all gods and goddesses, great grand holy mother of all divine, the primordial from which we all derive, great grand holy mother of all divine, the nothingness that allows all somethings to exist, great grand holy mother of all divine, she is all mother, there is none greater than she, great grand holy mother of all divine, for she is the vastness that allows us all to experience boundaries. Great Grand Holy Mother of all divine, Mother of Ra, the Most High, Great Grand Holy Father. Great Grand Holy Father Ra, he who created himself from she. Great Grand Holy Father Ra, creator and father of all things, father of all beings. She is his source. Amen Ra, Pata, Aum. What's good, everybody? It's your boy T. I want to give Chakra Doctor and everybody an uh, update on this miracle food that I have purchased a while back. The miracle food is amazing. I put it in my body and I feel like dancing. I, I feel amazing, bro, for real. This intracellular cleanse is an amazing thing. It helps you connect with your higher self. When you ingest this miracle food, it just locks you in on the certain frequency that you need to be at. What he puts in his miracle food is amazing. It makes your body rebirth itself. You feel rejuvenated. Your, your cells feel alive and you get rid of all inflammation. The mucus literally disappears. Every day I would wake up and I would have to blow my nose and then start my day. I don't have that anymore. It's been one week. I had chest pains. I would have these heart palpitations. That's completely gone, you guys. I took the miracle food and it just disappeared is i don't have it anymore and i feel so clairvoyant great grand holy mother and chakra doctor you guys are working together as a team to help these people uplift their frequency and it's the truth i'm not i'm not faking it i'm not fighting this i'm not trying to put on a facade so you can go buy something this is something that's really gonna help you chakra doctor rance dunbar the miracle food is something that you guys really need the miracle food is and the miracle tea and these algorithms you need this I promise you, love gang. <laughs> like, share, and subscribe to my new YouTube channel, the new home for Chakra Doctor's exclusive videos. Tune in for collaborations with other YouTube sensations. Hear topics, theories, and breakdowns like no other. Tune into videos on conspiracy theories, spirituality and enlightenment, hot celebrity news, education, movie breakdowns, and more. So go ahead and click the link below to subscribe to my YouTube channel and also follow, like, share, and subscribe to all my other social medias. to dealing with our brothers. You have to pass a certain test. You have to be part of some type of humiliation community. What it do, what it does, what it is, what it was, we about to get it in. Y'all already know, man. Y'all like, y'all share, y'all subscribe. Thank you for tuning in. We in for, we in for a real nice educational piece uh y'all see the name y'all see the name of the video surrounded by saturn inside of the rings you know um this video is for entertainment purposes only all topics you hear in this video have been proven to be false and fact checked you know i gotta say that just so i can stay politically correct
in these YouTube and other people's streets. You feel me? Are you a traveling man? You're are you a traveling man? Look, and you thought the dude that was going against him. I'm just showing you. You thought the dude that was saying, "Are you a traveling man? Are you a traveling man?" He with the stuff. He with the stick. He not again. He he may look like he against it, but he not with the stick. You feel me? Uh, but I just I, it, 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 it's just been getting. It, it's just been on me to really, 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 really give y'all a break, like just earth crack and break down this 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 uh Yahweh Saturn set. You know this everything that we do. Whether I don't care who you are, I don't care what you believe. In. If you believe in Islam, you worship in Saturn. You believe in Christianity, you worship in Saturn. You believe in Buddhism, you worship in Saturn. You believe in uh, what that is, uh, Christian in them, what that is, Hinduism, you worship in Saturn. You know, uh, Jesus, you worship in Saturn. You know, Satan, do you believe in Satan? You worship in Saturn. It don't matter what side of the spectrum you're on. You like to drive Toyotas? You paying homage to Saturn. You like to wear Nikes? You paying homage to Saturn. Wait a minute. You got a whirlpool? You got a whirlpool appliance in your crib? You worship in Saturn. You got Direct TV or Dish Network? Saturn. Now you believe what NASA tells you? You believe what Saturn tells you. You when you was coming up, you ever had a Sega Genesis? Saturn. You drive Nissan? Saturn. You got an Intel Pentium processor in your computer? Saturn. What, you got Wi-Fi, Earthlink, you name it? It's all Saturn. You, you like Universal Music Group? You name it, bro. It's all worship of Saturn. Okay, and we're going to get down into the receipts. And we're going to break it down that all of this stuff that, you know, all of this stuff that you guys think is not Saturn really is Saturn. Saturn, the God of a thousand names. Okay. Saturn, the God of a thousand names. Yahweh is Saturn. Make no mistake. Make no false hope. You know, you ain't got to worry about, look, we're going to get into it. We about, to, we, we about to get into it. Let's. Let's get the reading, man. Let's let, let's get the reading right quick. Again, this all goes back to the black cube of Saturn. Recent photos of Saturn from NASA show that the cube on the north pole of Saturn, known as the hexagon storm. How did Sat how did ancient civilizations know of the black cube Saturn? Muslims take pilgrimage to the Kaaba in Mecca. I got a picture of that. Hold up. Muslims take pilgrimage to the Kaaba in Mecca. Look, wait a minute. You won't see that? Let me show you what that looked like. Boom, right there. You see in your bottom right-hand corner? Muslims taking pilgrimage to the Hajj to pay homage to Saturn. Okay? So it don't matter if you're Muslim. Look at it. At the top is Christians. At the top, at the top is the uh is Jesus on the cross. So it don't matter whether you're a Muslim, whether it don't matter whether you're a Christian. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that real quick. All right, boom. Um, Muslims take a pilgrimage to the Kaaba in Mecca a building shaped like a black cube, which they run around the outside of it in circles, representing the rings of Saturn. Practitioners of Semitic religions wear um, phylacteries on their forehead, or wear, sorry, they wear phylacteries on their forehead and arm while they pray. Phylacteries are usually, are actually small black cubes. The cube also fits inside the center of the Star of David. So both the Muslims and Jewish people are partaking in Saturn worship. What about the Christians? What is their representation of Saturn? It is the cross. The cross is a cube that has been unfolded. He said, he said I feel the God of the Bible is none other than El, Set, Kronos. That is Father Time himself, both Satan and Santa are also derived from Saturn. In fact, Christmas is actually the pagan holiday Saturnalia. Laugh and call me a conspiracy theorist if you wish, but everything here is true. You Google it. Wait a minute. Boom. Google it. He was uh, he was thus used in translation when referring to gods from other cultures. The Romans perceived as severe. He was equated. With the Carthini uh with the with the Carthaginian 
God Bel Haman. Bel Haman. And remember, in, in, in Satanism, the demon, you replace the H with an M and it's Mamon or Mamun, right? To whom children were, were, were unalived, all right? And to Yahweh, whose Sabbat was referred to as Saturnai Dies, Saturn's Day. So literally, the Sabbath day that the Jewish people follow is translated is literally Saturn's day. So, oh, honor, when it says in the Bible, honor the Sabbath or honor the Sabbath to keep it holy, they're talking about honor Saturn's day. All right. So understanding this is going to get us into, listen, even back in the day, his name literally was Yahweh Saturn. Okay. The first primal son of worship they say the first primal son of worship for the babylonians the first primal son of worship for the romans the first primal son of worship for the canaanites the first primal son of worship for the sumerians but he was not the first primal son of worship for the egyptians for the atlanteans he was not the first primal son of worship so understanding that in actuality his actual name, first and last name, which he have a thousand names. Remember, God of a thousand names. I just showed you this earlier. He's the God of a thousand names. Okay? So one of his names is Yahweh Saturn. Okay? Just so I can just show you, just get a little, just, just, just get a little, just, just get a little some, some, some. Hold up. Look, we're going to get a little bit deeper. We're going to get a little bit deeper. All right? Uh, the Egyptian god Set is Saturn. And Isis is his daughter. This, this is why her uh, Egyptian name and the comedic name for Isis is called Aset. So there were four. There were, remember, and the reason why he goes by the four because it was four siblings. Okay, the four siblings were ready Asar, which is Osiris. You had Isis. Uh, I mean, you had Aset, which is Isis. You had Set, which is Asar's brother and Isis's brother, Set. And then you had Nephthys, which is the other sister. So it was four siblings, Nephthys and Isis, Osiris and Set. Okay? So this is why that four is so important in the cult in, in the occult and in when it comes when it comes down to the name uh, and the number of Yahweh. Remember, I always show y'all this. Remember? I always show y'all that the number four is the number manifestation of Yahweh. This is why the four is so important. Remember, this is the ritual transformation. This is the ritual of the set transformation. So the ritual of the set transformation is guarded by the number four. That number four is the manifestation of Yahweh. But the reason why that number four is so important is because of the four siblings. Of it is because of the four siblings, and there were four siblings. All right. And remember, that's what the four elements are also representative of the four elements, fire, earth, air, water. Now, boom, here we go. The Saturn cult has deceived us all, not only the followers of the Abrahamic religions, but also the atheists. Ready for this? Atheists, even y'all worshiping Saturn. Don't even know it. Charles Darwin was a member of the Saturn cult, who, of course, propagated the theory of evolution, which was combined with the lie of paleontology to ignite the modern atheist movement. The occult has less respect for atheists than Christians even, for atheists are blind to the intelligent design and the sacred geometry making up ma the material reality as a result of listening to the lies propagated by insecure cult members pretending to be atheists themselves. It get deep. It get real. It ain't no. It, it ain't no game, bro. It ain't no. It ain't no game, bro. We about to. We about to break it down. You know. The, uh, we about to break it down the other way around, man. And when you see these symbols, when you see the Baphomet, that's Saturn. When you see Jesus on the cross, that's Saturn. When you see the as above, so below conundrum, that's Saturn. Remember this. this see Michael. Remember this. Remember this right here. That Michael Jackson uh album cover, Escape. Escape from who? Escape from where? Saturn. Okay, so understanding these terms will help us to understand a little bit deeper as we delve off deeper into the, um, as we delve off deeper into and show you 
all of the different ways that we are surrounded by Saturn, bro. We are surrounded on all sides by the Saturn worship. You know what I'm saying? When I every time when I come through, I always tell you, look, you, when I come through, you already know who I'm coming, who I'm aiming at. The reptiles, who do they answer to? Saturn. Okay. The 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 uh unaliving and sacrificing of children. Who are they sacrificing to? Saturn, Set, aka Yahweh. The rings of Saturn, what do they look like? There are seven different rings. And they look like that right there. The rings of Saturn. Okay. These are the manifestations of the rings of Saturn. Understand that Yahweh, Jehovah, Allah, God, as people refer him to, all right, are literally different names for the thousand name God, Saturn. Okay, when you get into and Google it, Yahweh is known as the false God. Okay, we got to understand and we got to know that there are bigger consciousnesses at play. There are greater deities at play. There are, and these deities have greater powers, way more powerful than us in these little human bodies at work and at play right now. And when you see the manifestations of Saturn, it, it manifests in these forms. See, this is why... If you want to be technical, why I am so against, uh, why I, not so against, but why I do not support this movement. I do not support this movement because it, it is the movement of a lie, the movement of Saturn. Okay. And when you analyze, when you analyze what's going on, see, y'all forgot about who, 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 who the real, who the real one is. See, they say the white people think I look like this. The Arabs think I look like this. The black people think I look like this. What I actually look like, though. What I actually look like right there. So this is giving you a clue into what's truly governing and running the world on a major scale. What's truly governing and running the world on a major scale? The stars, the planets. The asteroids, the the uh, the different planetary bodies moving in moving in motion. Okay, the different planetary bodies moving in motion. This is what's governing the world as we know it. You are in the game cube of Saturn. Okay, when you think about this, a cube can be likened unto what a prison cell. When you go into a box, when you go into a cage in jail, don't ain't the prison cell shaped like a cube? As a matter of fact, when you go into your room right now, whatever room you're in in the house right now, look at each wall. All the walls on the side, ain't it's, ain't it's made to shape a cube? One, two, three, four, four sides. There go those four again. Four sides, shaped like a cube. Saturn. Okay? You got, you got front, back, Right, left, up, down. That's six positions. Saturn. The Nintendo GameCube was another worship of Saturn. Remember, heaven is in the head. Hell is in the heel, in the foot. Okay? Once you start to dissect, and remember what that six-point star actually means. It represents the six-pointed, it represents the six-pointed um, storm the six-pointed storm crown of Saturn. You can't escape this, guys. And we're about to get deep into it. Oh, man, listen, man. Man, grab your popcorn. Grab your gummy bears. You know, go get your gummy worms. Go get your, your, your Doritos, your Cheetos, your Frito-Lays. You understand me? You got, you got some water. You got some juice. You got some, you got some tweeds, weeds, needs you what you need. I'm about to blow, we about to, we about, we about to blow this wide open. And after this right here, you're, you're gonna be able to take clips from this video and just show this to anybody. Receipts for days. Receipts for days, and you're gonna be able to show this to anybody, all right? So once again, y'all make sure y'all hit the like, y'all hit the share, y'all hit the subscribe, so that y'all, so that I can continue to bring more content like this. Earlier, somebody had asked me, what happened to your Instagram, Doc? What you think happened to the Instagram? You know they're not trying to let me get this information out to y'all. Every time I start a new channel, it only lasts for so long because they take it down, and you know how that go. So I got to operate through different means, y'all. 
man, they, they, they got mad. They got mad because I only had 10, 14, 15,000 followers, but doing five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten million 10 million views. How is he doing it? The algorithms. So y'all make sure y'all go to the website and get the algorithms. Y'all want to improve financially, get the algorithms. Y'all want to have a better love and love in your relationship, get the algorithms. You trying to heal and protect yourself, get the algorithms. You trying to go viral, get the algorithm. You trying to um, seek justice and get out of jail free card and make sure that you beat your case, get the algorithms, bro. It, 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 that That's just plain and simple, all right? But this Saturn worship goes deep. You are in the GameCube of Saturn, okay? And when you are talking about the six, why why is the six so important? We about to get into it. We about to, we, we, I'm about to see where y'all hear that right now. Why is the six so important? They throw up the six. They throw up the six, 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 six. Let me see where y'all. Let me see where y'all intelligence at. Let me see. Let me see where y'all intelligence at. Why is the six? What is the main reason why is the six so important? What is the main reason why the six is so important? You see them do this here, but why they do that? Why do they throw up the six? Why is the six so important? Can anybody tell me? Why them black girls talking to them white boys? Why them black girls talking to the white boys? Why the black girls talking to the white boys? You gonna make your daddy mad? You gonna make your daddy mad? Why is the six so important? Can anybody tell me? In the audience, they got almost 100 people here. Why are the six so important? Much love, thanks for the algorithms have seen a difference in 30 days. I'm trying to tell you, bro. I'm trying to tell you. And that's just, and TBZ, you only got a few algorithms. You ain't even must, you ain't even must dive deep and swim into the pool of algorithms. You just dipped your toe and got your feet wet. That's all you did. And that was enough, you know, and, and, that, and you seen some results from that. But please tell me, um, please tell me, y'all, why is the six of proton six protons six neutrons six electrons but why are there six protons why are there six neutrons why are there six electrons why is the six so important we know they got six protons six neutrons six electrons but why do they have proton six protons why do they have six electrons why do they have six neutrons that's a good that was a good one mason Shout out, shout out to the shout out to the Instagram world. I mean, uh, shout out to the uh Twitter X world, my Twitter X people that's following watching the video. Why is the six so important? You see the celebrities do it all the time. You see them do that. Six ah, six. You, you hear Drake call himself the six god. You said the the Bible says it's gonna be six six six, and the number of the, the uh, calculate the number of the beast. His number is a man, and that number is six six six. All these people in here, I know one of y'all know. I know one of y'all got an intuition. Come on, give me one more guess before I tell y'all. Give me one more guess before I tell y'all. Just take a wild guess. Why? Why? We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna break it down and we're gonna read it later. But why is the six so important, bro? The six is the, the reason why the six is so important. Since everybody tongue-tied right now, the reason why the six is so important is because you have Saturn is the sixth planet away from the sun. The sixth planet away from the sun. You have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, that's five, Saturn. That's why the six is so important, y'all. Understand that. That's why the six is so important. Because the six represents the sixth body, the sixth heavenly body away from the sun, which is what? Saturn. Okay. Now that now that we got that covered, now that we got that covered, we can get back into the business. Boom. So that's what the six proton, six neutron, six electron mean, but Saturn is the sixth planet away from the sun. I knew that, but didn't want to be wrong. Glory Glocks, you down bad. You down bad, Glory Glocks. I knew that, but I didn't want to be wrong. See, bro, sometimes it takes being wrong to, to get it right. Sometimes it takes being wrong to get it right. You know how many times I got it wrong before I was able to get it right and get up in front of hundreds of some people and tell y'all this, bro? You know how many times I got it wrong before I was able to get it right and be able to get in front of y'all and tell y'all this, man? Man, don't be afraid of getting it wrong, man. You feel me? Don't be afraid of getting it wrong, bro. You feel me? The hidden consciousness, the mind's eye, wields dominion over the physical avatar, channeling its desires into the fabric of the simulation. The head, symbolizing heaven, serves as the throne for consciousness, 
as it houses the seat of perception, the eye. Remember the eye, your third eye is your pineal gland located right there behind your eyes, your little eyes, right? Um, the eye, remember that's why I call the eyes of the windows to the soul. The eye, our consciousness transcends the confines of the 3D matrix, is existing in a realm of true reality beyond the material plane. Let's keep it going. Look, let's keep it going. All right. So remember, you wonder why Katy Perry wearing that cube on top of her head? She worshiping Saturn. You wonder why this Muslim has a black cube on top of his head? He is worshiping Saturn. He is worshiping Saturn, okay? Understand this. Understand this and notice when you take a cube and you unfold the cube, it will make the symbol of Jesus on the cross. It will make the cross symbol. So this is where the cross comes from. The cross comes from the unraveling of the cube. And remember, as you as you all know, as you all know, the cube is shaped like a cage. Or a cage is shaped like a cube, however you wanna, however you wanna call it. I used to always wonder in Mortal Kombat why his name was Johnny Cage. You wonder why his name was Johnny Cage? Back to Saturn. Once again, all back to Saturn, bro. You feel me? So understanding that this is deep. It goes deep. Wait, it goes deep. It goes deep. As you can tell. Our bodies are what? Governed by cells. Cells govern the body. Well, what is a cell? A cell is a prison suit. A, a cell is a prison um, for the soul. Prison cell. Remember, now remember, I'm going to show you right now. They say that our, we, the reason why we're alive because of the air that we breathe, right? We breathe air. It's called the breath of life, right? Well, think about this. It's called the breath of life. What body, I mean, what organ in our body governs the breath of life? The lungs. The lungs are located where? In your rib cage, a cell. Ooh, I got your love locked down. Your love locked down. I got, see what the love locked down mean? It's all, it's all Saturn worship, bro. Listen, bro. I'm talking about from the smallest little bitty detail, bro. You wonder why Kanye West always talking about Jesus is king, Jesus is king? Saturn worship. Bro, I'm telling you. You wonder why Ryan Garcia talking about, oh man, they're the devil and I worship Jesus and they're the Illuminati and I worship Jesus? Because it's just another play on worshiping Saturn. He know, he, he know what's up. He know what's up. He know what's up, okay? Boom. You married? You got your wedding ring? Saturn worship. You're a Saturn worshiper. The tradition of wearing rings traces back to the ancient Canaanites who adopted it as a form of worship for their deity, Saturn. You wear a ring. Hold on. And you like it, then you should have put a ring. Uh, 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 and if you like it, then you should have put a Saturn on it. If you like it, then you should have put some Saturn on it. If you like it, then you should have put some Saturn on it. That's what that, that basically what she said. That's basically what she said. If you like it, you should have put some Saturn on it. Okay? Boom. As we go in, now we're getting into the Saturn moon matrix. Because remember, the Alpha and Omega represents actually the two pillars of Freemasonry. Okay? And the two pillars of Freemasonry is what? Cancer and Capricorn. Now, who in astrology, what governs the moon? Because you see the moon to the left right here. What governs the moon? What represents the moon in astrology? Cancer. What represents Saturn in astrology? Capricorn. So the two pillars of Freemasonry heavily rely on the Cancer Capricorn, um, the, the Cancer Capricorn conundrum. And that Cancer Capricorn conundrum, David, I call it the Saturn moon matrix. Literally, the moon is the womb that our soul enters, that our soul goes through to enter into Earth. If you don't believe me, go watch the movie Moonfall. Go watch the, go on Netflix Prime or one of them video shows and go look at the movie Moonfall and it shows you how the moon plays a part in our soul's entrance and exit in and out of this realm, okay? Boom, so the moon, womb, soul enters Earth 
through the moon, all right? Saturn, physical, physical world, soul leaves through Saturn, but the soul only leaves through Saturn if you die believing in an aspect of the Saturnine consciousness. If you, let's say, and remember in, in the Quran, they tell you, um, not in the Quran, in the Hadith, they tell you that when you die, the angel will appear and ask you, who is your God? Who is your Lord? And if you say any form of Saturn, you will be recycled through the Saturn moon matrix and get reincarnated back into here. But if you say something that is opposite of that, you will be able to pass on and go forward, pass and, and go forward and not, um, and not reincarnate your consciousness back into this realm, okay? So when you talk about the beginning of life, right, in the end of life, you're talking about two aspects of the Saturn moon matrix, Alpha and Omega, all right? Saturn is the most high. He is the Lord of the Rings. Saturn wears the crown. That is Saturn's, I mean, this is Saturn's world, okay? Corinthians 4 and 4, they go that 4 again, right? Satan, who is the god of this world. Satan equals Saturn, Okay, Saturn who is the god of this world. You see this Michael, you see Michael Jackson try to escape what Saturn. All right, boom, and we get deeper. And we get deeper, we're gonna see right here. Now, this way it really this way they really show you that the God of the Bible is really the devil. Because the Bible implicitly tells you, do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, what happens? You lose your soul, right? But do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the Bible tells you, don't love this world, shun the world. Wait a minute. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means, in, it means that you're an enemy of God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Wait a minute. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? Now, wait a minute. Don't John 3.16 tell you, for God so loved the world? So if God loves the world, but they tell you that if you love the world, you're going to be the enemy of God, then that lets you know that the God that loves the world, that God that's on the dollar, the back of the dollar, and God we trust, is not really God, it's the devil. The devil loves the world, all right? This is why the, the devil loves the world and the things in the world. Now, here we go, check it out, boom. Hold up. Here goes a pic, here goes an image, here goes some imagery of Saturn. To the left, you have Saturn eating, eating his own child's heart. This is what they do. This is what they do in the occult. This is what this this is one of the rituals that they gotta do when they join and drink the chrome. When they drink the chrome and they join into the to the to the cult of the black cube and they start sacrificing their mama, sacrificing their daddy, and doing all that stuff. This is one of the rituals that they that, that they gotta go through. They got to partake and witness the unaliving of the sacrificial lamb. Who is the sacrificial lamb? The child. Who is the child? Who is the child of God? Children, infants. Infants are the children of God. They are the only beings who are pure, innocent, and with no blame and no shame of sin on their soul. So that is a lie about being a born sinner because babies haven't committed any sinful crimes yet. This is why they they are the this is why this is why I said Jesus loved the little children. You thought they were talking about Jesus loved the little children, like God loved the children and he protected the children. No, Jesus loved the little children because Jesus represents Saturn, and Saturn is a child sacrificer. Okay. And we're gonna get into some reading, man. Let's get into the reading. Let's get into the reading. And as we get into the reading, it's gonna get a little bit more deeper than than usual. Okay. Boom. You see Saturn, he is eating the flesh of a screaming infant. While this image is a colorful and proactive I mean, and provocative, the traditions indicate that Saturn swallowed his children whole, much as a person might swallow a medical pill. The 
children are contained undamaged but dormant within the being of Saturn until his youngest child, uh, Zeus, aka Jupiter, releases them by use by the use of a purgative, right? Um, something that purges them, basically like a laxative, right? Um, and thus the younger gods war against Saturn and the Titans. Saturn was deposed by Jupiter, but Jupiter was unable to destroy Saturn just as Saturn could not destroy Coelus. Gods, uh, Co Coelus, gods, it must be noted, hold on, gods was unable to destroy Saturn just as Saturn could not destroy Coelus. Gods, it must be noted, are resilient beings, yet in mythology, they can be maimed, crippled, and imprisoned. Saturn then is placed in chains and banished to the Catonic realms of Tartarus. Now, remember, y'all always hear the people on TikTok and y'all always hear the people uh, on the conspiracy theory talking about how there used to be, how this land um, used to be called Tartarus. There we go. The, who, who rules the realm of Tartarus? Saturn, which he is said to rule. The chains of Saturn become one of the definitive parts of his divine panoply thereafter. While Kronos is relegated to being a sort of a God-devouring monster in, Hellen in, Hellen um, in Hellenic tradition, the Roman Saturn is a much more beloved figure. Although Jupiter, Mars, and Minerva become the major gods of the empire, the Roman state and his, and its, his historians acknowledge that Saturn was the original deity of the Roman people. And they claimed that the Italians themselves were descended from Saturn. So y'all wonder why the mob and all that is so prevalent with the Italians. It's Saturn's way. And they are, and you want to be checking them, they are the devil's chosen people, the Italians, believe it or not. That's where Rome is located. Rome is located in Italy, henceforth Italian. The Mons Saturnius is one of the hills on which Rome was built and the oldest temple in Rome belongs to Saturn. Saturn has his own priesthood and the state treasury was kept at his temple. The original name of the Italian settlement situated on the site of Rome was Saturnium. Further, Saturn enjoyed, um, sorry, sorry. Saturn enjoyed a week long series of revels each year, which began on the 17th of December. For a deposed deity, Saturn enjoyed very profound respect, second perhaps only to Jupiter. The very memory of Saturn's prior rule was not one of a cruel despot, but a, as noted above, a golden age where living beings lack for nothing. Yet Saturn's character is not benign. And there are no records that suggest otherwise. Being the king of an age of plenty does not suggest that Saturn that, that Saturn was a kind master. But rather than under his reign, the earth did not withhold its bounty. Saturn was the origin of the Western image of the Grim Reaper, and as the deity identified with harvesting, he was expected to harvest plants, animals, humans alike. Okay, wait a minute. Memories of the Italic people, Saturn was worshipped with human sacrifices. Later, when the practices fell into disfavor, torches, torches were burned in his honor as a substitute. And now that just reminded me, remember back when we read about slavery, we read about the time where slavery was going crazy, um, how they used to burn crosses and torches on people's lawns? Huh? Saturn worship. Okay. When they be burning that cross, that's when they be burning the cross, that's a form of worshiping Saturn. Okay. Modern scholars, however, of the classical period argue that Marcobius is only partially correct. There is no question that human sacrifice was part of the worship of the reaper. Remember, human sacrifice is the number one reason why human beings are at a low frequency. Even so, while Marcobius tries to suggest that burning torches submitted humans, uh, substituted human sacrifice, Versnell, uh, yeah, Versnell has discussed the considerable evidence 
that the gladiatorial games were carried out as a ritual observance to Saturn. So all of these games that you see us partaking in, these are ritual observances to Saturn, y'all. The practice of human sacrifice was not solely an Italian custom. The Greeks, too, performed human sacrifices to Kronos, which is another name for Saturn, Kronos on the day of the festival, the Cronia. Okay? This is, bro, this is, the, listen to this. Ready for this? Reports, uh, reports that in the city of Rhodes on the day of Cronia, a criminal was taken to the gates of the city, given alcohol, and then slaughtered. A criminal was taken to the gates of the city, given alcohol, and then slaughtered. That immediately reminded me of the story in the Bible of when Jesus was crucified and they substituted, they sub they substituted and they gave up Barnabas, uh, Barabbas. They gave up Barabbas and they said, Give us Barabbas and you take Jesus. And they took the and they gave up the criminal and they um took Christ. Um the Greeks and Romans had conflicting, even paradoxical views on the world under Saturn's rule. Both cultures agreed that at some distant point in time, Saturn had been master of the three worlds, celestial, terrestrial, and chthonic, alternately earth, ocean, and underworld. While, while Saturn ruled, the world was its utopia, a golden age of plenty, all were equal and thrived somehow under Saturn's rule, the celebrated Roman poet Virgil. Oh my God, what happened to Virgil? Oh my God, what happened? Now we know that, that why Virgil is so important. The celebrated Roman poet Virgil mentions this in his fourth ep uh in his fourth eclogue, lines five through eight. And basically, you know, that's uh Latin, but it reads in English. Now comes the final era of the civil song. The great order of the ages is a born afresh. And now justice returns, the, the return of Saturn's reign. A now, I mean, I'm sorry, now a new lineage is set down from high heaven. Wait a minute, we gonna get deep. We gonna get deeper, man. We ain't, we ain't, we ain't about to play no game. Virgil is not suggesting, Virgil is not suggesting the return of Saturn's kingdom as a hideous nightmare. Nevertheless, Saturn's kingdom was not ideal, for which reason it had to be overthrown by the Olympian god. Saturn was the aspect of chaos. And so the equality enjoyed by all was the equal equality of utter subjugation. The gods themselves had absolutely no part in Saturn's empire since Saturn committed cannibalism, consuming the deities and holding them within his own essence. The Titans may have enjoyed his rule, but arguably they also were monstrous aberrations that had survived from the same primordial chaos as their king. It should not be forgotten that the hundred-handed monsters, the hundred-handed monsters known in Greek as the Hecatoncheries or something like that, I don't know how to pronounce that Latin word, were actually the brothers of Saturn. The and differed from him largely in that their chaotic essence was evident was evident physically where saturn's was internal the eventual war of the gods and the titans was the battle of chaos against order as with similar battles across many mythologies that's what the black and white mean on the checkerboard with the uh with the Freemasonry. One represents order, one represents chaos, and the battle between order and chaos. Okay? Y'all gotta be able to decipher this stuff. The Roman festival of Saturnalia deserves some consideration. All right, now they talk about the Roman festival of Saturnalia. All right? Um, and, and basically, the Roman festival of Saturnalia is what? You guys? Christmas. Christmas. Okay? Christmas is the Roman festival of Saturnalia. So, let me see if they have anything important to read right here. Uh, all right, boom, here we go. Boom. A Saturn, uh, um, let me see, Was uh, Saturn was appointed to the place of the usual king or emperor to serve as the master of ceremonies, and his, dic and his dictates were generally followed. Small, humorous gifts 
were given by friends and it was a time of for pranks. So now you know why pranks are so pushed on the internet. You thought pranks were just jokes that people play on each other. No, pranks are an early homage paying worship to Saturn. So this is why I don't really partake into pranks. Why? Because all it is is just another form of Saturn worship. I'm trying to do, I'm trying to detox and depose myself from all Saturn worship as much as possible. But I know that's impossible because this is his, I know that's impossible because this is his world. If I, wear, if I, if I put on some Nikes right now, I, that's a form of worship in Saturn. And I got me some Nikes. You understand what I'm saying? So you can't, you can't detox it all the way, but you can, you know, you can try to do a, you can constantly do it to the best of your ability and not fall for the snares and the traps. All right, boom, hold on. Let's get to the let's get to the meat and potatoes. Boom. Here we go. Um, let me read right. Let me give him the all right, bam. You ready? This is about Saturn. This, this is about Saturn being a demiurge. Um, there is primordial light, sometimes called the pleroma, perfect fullness, or alternately, uh the and ultimately, it's opposite the perfect emptiness beyond the light. There is the darkness of the undifferentiated chaos. From chaos, there emerges a consciousness called the Demiurge. The Demiurge is known as the, the what? The divine architect. What do Freemasons call God? The divine architect. I'm about to show you right now what the Demiurge and who the Demiurge is. So you can know that the Demiurge is Yahweh, and Yahweh is the Demiurge. Here we go, and we read it right here. In the Archontic Sethian and Ophite system, Yahweh is regarded as the malevolent Demiurge, the false god of the Old Testament. So we know that the false god of the Old Testament and the Demiurge are basically both one and the same. All right, so Yahweh, Demiurge, Yahweh, Demiurge, Saturn, Demiurge is the same difference, it, 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 you know, um, Ain't no difference. Together, the Demiurge and its, and its archons generate the seven celestial realms, which include the material world. The reason why there are seven celestial realms that include the material world, those represent the seven rings around Saturn. And the reason why you have seven chakras in your body, because those seven chakras represents the seven rings of Saturn. Okay? The seven rings of Set, the seven rings of Yahweh, whatever you want to call uh the thousand named God, right? Um, the Demiurge, for example, was understood to be the deity who revealed the Torah to Moses. And so the Jewish religion is understood by many Gnostic writers to be thoroughly Demiurgic or Satanic. This makes sense, especially given the cosmocentric nature of the Torah. That's crazy. Many of the classic Gnostic movements identify Saturn with the Demiurge, the cosmic architect. The association occurs implicitly as a result of Saturn's association with the Hermetic or, non or Neoplatonic rule over the seventh heaven. It also occurs implicitly through the through Saturn's supposed association with the deity of the Old Testament, which is echoed later in the Picatrix tradition that Saturn is the Lord of the Jews via their celebration of the Sabbath. These, um, these, these associations are evident when one examines several texts that record Gnostic beliefs. Saturn, as the Nemeers, is called by several names in the Gnostic traditions. Most commonly, he is called Yaldabaoth. Remember that? I just showed you that. Most commonly, he is called Yaldabaoth. That is a, and that's what uh, the Baphomet is a play on, you know, uh, is a play on that word. Baphomet is a play on Yaldabaoth. Uh, you ever seen that TV show or that movie, Beowulf? That's a play on Yaldabaoth. Okay. Um, he is called Yaldabaoth, which is Aramaic for son of chaos. 
This is a reference to the Gnostic traditions that Saturn emerged from the primordial chaos, which he later uses to create the cosmos and its creatures. Saturn is also referred to in some more uh, polemical texts as Socles, food, and Samael, venomous one of God, blind one of God, an angelic name known from Hebrew tradition, less commonly other texts refer to the to Saturn as Abraxas, okay, Lion of God. The Gnostic text entitled The Origin of the World directly identifies the seven powers, meaning the Demiurge and his six archons and the seven planets, it reads, okay? And basically they're just talking about how, you know, um, you know, Demiurge and the seven and, and, and the archons. One also finds Saturn associated directly with Yahweh the Bill. The Nazi text, the secret book of John, for example, identifies Saturn with the planetary realms and the days of the week. Okay. Yahweh the Bill is the first ruler who took great power from his mother. Boom. This is why I this is why I this is why I always pay homage to the great grand holy mother. Because Yahweh ain't doing nothing but copying off. The mother, Yao the Bell, aka Yahweh, took great power. Is the first ruler and deity who took great power from his mother. Hold on, let me sip this water. Who took great power from his mother? That's deep. So everything that you see Yahweh doing right now, everything that you see Saturn doing right now, is nothing but an imitation of the great grand holy mother of all divine, the source of all gods and goddesses. Oh, great grand holy mother of all divine, the primordial from which we all derive. Great grand holy mother of all divine, the nothingness that allows all something to exist. See? Now y'all see why I do that. Because he ain't doing nothing but imitating the mother. Okay, boom, let's get into it. Let's break it down. Then he left her and moved away from the place where he was born. He took control and created for himself other realms with luminous fire, which still exists. He made it with mind, he made it with the mindlessness in him and produced authorities for himself. Basically, he said he made it with himself. He made it with himself and the and produce actual offspring. This is what Baphomet. This, this is what Baphomet represents: the male and female god that made it with himself and took the offspring that he made it with himself and applied them as authorities. And y'all call those authorities principalities or principles. Okay, boom. Yah Yah the Baal, Yah the Baal, aka Yahweh, stationed seven kings. One for each sphere of heaven. Now you know why the book of Kings is in the Bible. To reign over the seven heavens. And five to reign over the depth of the abyss. The rulers created seven powers for themselves. This is the sevenfold nature of the week. This is why you got seven days in your week. Okay? Man, it goes deep. The planetary associations of the seven powers with the seven heavens are apparent in other agnostic works. Wait a minute. I think I got a video where he says, the, uh, we have been remade by y'all the bells in the image of the seven archons who created and enslaved this world. Hold on. Let me see if I can find that right quick. Uh, uh, um, let me see if I can find that right quick. I told you. Let me see if I can find it right quick. If I can find it right quick, that's gonna mess you up, huh? If I can find that right quick, that's gonna mess you up right quick. When he said, and he said they say that in the movies. We have been remade by y'all the bills in the image of the seven archons who created and enslaved this world. Let me let me let me see if I can find that right now. Let me see if I can find that right now. Hold up. The hip man is complete. We have been remade by Yaldabaoth in the image of the seven archons who created and enslaved this world. Woo, I just got chills. Woo, I found it on, on the first try, nigga. You know it's, I found it on the first try. 
I found it on the first try. I didn't pre I didn't preload this. I found it on the first try, bro. So remember, y'all the bills. So remember this, bro. They got it in the movies. They show it to you in the movies. Who created and enslaved this world? This is not a world of freedom. The reason why you uh, how many people watching this video right now wish they could get away? Don't you wish sometime you could just leave this body and leave this world and be free from all the bills and ills of the world? If you take the B off of bills, you got what? Ills. Ain't the name of the group that run this world called the Illuminati? And don't they call themselves sickos? Well, you can't be sick unless you're ill, mother. You can't be sick unless you're ill. No, man, I went through my list. Look, I went through my uh I went through my thing. I I went through my little list of videos and I pressed, you know, I, I got them titled, but I just don't it's called it's titled number one, two, three, four, and five. I pressed the I pressed the fifth one and I got it right on the first try. Boom. This nigga said we have been remade by Yah the Bell in the image of the seven archons who created and enslaved this world. I got it right on the first try. Cause I could have pressed this one. Our Legion arrived. I could have pressed this one. We are the hidden masters. I could have pressed this one. Those was those would have been wrong. I I I I got the right one and I pressed the right one. The hit man is complete. We have been remade by Yaldabaoth in the image of the seven archons who created and enslaved this world. Pressure. Pressure bus pipes are crazy diamonds, people. Never forget that. Never, ever, 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 ever forget that. Okay. The planetary associations. Hold on. So the seven kings, that represents what? The seven archons. Okay. The seven, the uh, the seven days of the week, the seven archons. Remember, when before Saturn, aka set, the Egyptian got set took control of this world, we did not have seven days in the week. We had 10 days a week. Go look it up. We had 10 days a week. We had 36 weeks in a year. Three plus six is nine. And we wouldn't on the six. And our bodies wouldn't on the six, six, six. Our bodies was on the nine, nine, nine frequency. And we was tall. And we was big. And they had big old tall trees. And they had big old tall creatures. Big old tall. Man, listen. Caterpillars and spiders and butterflies were humongous when we were big. We were giants and caterpillars and butterflies were the sizes of lions, tigers, and bears today. The size of lions, tigers, and bears, that's what the size of caterpillars and butterflies and stuff. Because we were humongous, we were ginormous, but we have been, remember, who they, he said, created and enslaved us in this world. So we, we are enslaved in these bodies. We are enslaved, our consciousness are enslaved into these bodies, enslaved into these minds, bro. We are not here to have fun. Why y'all trying to have fucking fun? We are not here to have fun. We are not here to, to uh oh have peace on earth. No, we are here to battle the devil. For those of you who are not sold a soul, if you haven't sold your soul, you are here to battle Saturn, my nigga. How do you battle Saturn with the truth? Because the devil is a liar, my nigga. The devil is a liar. The only way you can battle him is with the truth. But how can you battle him if you don't know the truth? You think, oh, I worship Allah. I don't worship no Saturn. Nigga, that's that's that that, that state the same thing. Saturn is Allah. Saturn is Jehovah. Saturn is Buddha. Saturn is Yahweh. Saturn is Jesus. Saturn is Krishna. Saturn is all of these deities y'all worshiping, bro. Is a form of Saturn worship. And, what's, and, and before his name was Yahweh, his name was what? Yah the Baals. Yah the Baals, okay? This is why you, this is why, and people don't know that. Um, in, in, in Italy, they call it what they go? They go Chao. And they spell it C-I-A-O. Take the C off, it's what? Yao. Chao. See? And, 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 and what the homos do? The homos say, ow. That's another play on y'all. That's another play on Yahweh, bro. Hold on, man. Let me get to this. Uh, Yahweh stations seven kings 
one for each sphere of heaven to reign over the seven heavens. What are the seven heavens? Your seven chakras. Your seven chakras are your seven heavens. So there is literally, and the Quran says it, there will be a demon and an angel appointed to you at birth. Okay? Why? To govern over your seven heavens, your seven heavens being your seven major chakra points, okay? These are the seven major entry points that your soul enters and leaves the body on. This is why, literally, your chakras enter into the body and form the and form what you call a spinal cord, bro. A cord is something that you plug into a wall to get energy from. You literally are getting cosmic energy. Your spinal cord is literally conducting cosmic energy in the form of your chakras. Okay? Hold on. Seven kings over the seven heavens and reigned over the seven heavens and the five and five to reign over the depths of the abyss. Why you think the five business days? That why you think you got seven days out the week, but we only active for the five business days. Those five days, those five business days represents what? The thing about business rep is is, is is synonymous to abyss, a business, a business. A business is synonymous to a business, nigga. And the reason why you got five a business days because they represent the five days of the abyss, the five days of darkness of Saturn. So literally, your nine to five is literally five days of darkness you get to live in. Five days of darkness you get to live in. You rest on a Sabbath, right? You, you got to honor the Sabbath. You can't work on a Sabbath, which is what? And guess what? You only get one day of sunshine. You are my sunshine. Why do they call it sunshine? My only sunshine. You only get one day of sunshine, nigga, on Sunday. And then they trick you to go to church and worship Saturn on that day. Bitch. Tell me I'm playing, boy. No, but listen, we about to bust this open. Though. This is a sevenfold nature of the week. The planetary, the planetary association of the seven powers with the seven heavens are apparent in other Gnostic or anti-Gnostic works. The Christian author or origin investigated the, Oph the Ophite Gnostic sect, interviewing its members and reading some of their texts as part of the research into heretical movements. Okay, hold on. Let me get, let me fast forward through all the chitter chatter. Get to the meat and potatoes. Uh, all right, yeah, hold on. There we go. Boom. Here we go. We're about to get into it. With mixed success, then listen the secret teachings with the uh, the mix of secret teachings with the Gnostic received after passing through the spiritual gates, which are governed by the archons. Okay. At the first gate. Say, hell, solitary king. What's the first gate? The root chakra. Where's the first gate located at on earth? America. America, we are the first gate. Okay? Hell, solitary king. Now you know, now you understand why when you playing cards, they got a game called solitaire. Ooh, y'all don't want me to put these pieces of the puzzle together for you. Y'all don't want me to put these pieces of the puzzle together for you, my friend. This dude named is Chakra Doctor. When Saturn worship indulgence, no, nigga, Saturn worship blocks your chakras. Your chakras are your spirit and your soul, crazy. This nigga, and look at this nigga named the Mighty Hand. The Mighty Hand of who? Saturn. Nigga, you ain't nothing but an agent of Saturn, you dummy. Duck ass nigga, man. You talking about Yahweh, nigga. Yahweh is Saturn. And then he appointed seven archons to enslave your chakras. Your chakras are your spirit and your soul, dummy. He has not. Remember, fear in him who not can kill the body. Rather, fear him who can destroy the soul. Saturn can't destroy your soul. That's why you got to sell it to him. Saturn can't destroy your soul. That's why you got to sell it to him. He can destroy your body. He can destroy your mind. But he can't destroy your soul. That's why you got to sell it to him. That's why he always got somebody trying to get you to sell you their sell you um sell um them your soul, in some kind of way, shape, form, or fashion. Okay, boom. It says. You are the first uh, power, the darkening of the night, 
Utter destruction. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Let me get it. Um, all right. It is important to clarify that while the Gnostic groups regarded the Demiurge as an inferior being, the Demiurge is Saturn, y'all. The Gnostics regarded Saturn as an inferior being to the perfect unity of the Pleroma. Saturn deity, the Saturn deity, Yaldabaoth is not an enemy. Uh, is not an enemy of humanity. Indeed, the deity is commanded, uh, is considered to be the parent of the maternal of the material cosmos. Right, the parent. Remember, the parent of the material cosmos. My opinion is he is the enemy. Of, he the enemy of human beings. That's why he put y'all. That's why he put you through so much hell on Earth. Okay. However, there are, uh, however, in their, oh, sorry, the material cosmos, most Gnostics, however, in their rejection of the material world, and that's what the Bible said, be ye in the world, but not of the world, do not love the world, the material world, the Bible told you don't love it. The Bible told you don't love the material world. Okay, the material world is not your friend. The Quran says that the material world is nothing but play and amusement. Do not fall in love with the material world. It is nothing but play and amusement. It is nothing but the illusion of sect. Okay? So this is why you are supposed to shun the material world. Because when you shun the material world, you are shunning y'all the bills. You are shunning the demiurge. You are shunning Saturn. You are shunning Satan. And you are saying, get thee behind me, Satan. This is why it's recommended that you fast. When you fast, you are shunning the material world. What is the material world? Food. You are shunning the material world. How many people done died over these materials? How many people have died over these materials? How many people have died over food, clothing, shelter, education, medication, diamonds, gold, jewels, trinkets, cars, clothes, money, hosts? How many people have died over the material world? This is how you know it's not good for you. It's, it, it's, it's necessary for you to exist in the material world, and you need the material world to make material moves, but do not love your materials. Do not love money. Do not love sex. Do not love physical things. The physical things are only a material manifestation that help you understand spiritual lessons. Love the spiritual lesson that the material thing is teaching you. Be ye in the world, but not of the world, my people. Okay, um, hold up. Let me see where I'm going back. Uh, it is understood that Saturn is the emanation of chaos, but chaos is the origin of the cosmos in Gnostic thought. It is not at all anti-Gnostic towards, uh, um, sorry, anti-Gnostic towards it. Uh, let me get to the meat and potatoes. All right, boom. Curiously, the uh, the Valentinians, not the Valentinian Gnostics, presented a similar but different paradigm, in which the Demiurge rules all the celestial realms except for Earth, which is held by a renegade archon, the Devil. Thus, the seven planetary realms are at odds with the Earth, and so Saturn is the distant king who seeks to save the initiate from the cycle of rebirth. That's a lie. Think about it. Valentinians are the Valentines. Valentine's Day. Come on, man. Valentine's Day gets you to worship the material world once again. You got to go buy her flowers. You got to go buy her candy. You got to go buy her materials to prove and win her immaterial love. Why do I got to buy you materials to prove and to earn that which is immaterial? Your love is immaterial. Why I got to buy you materials? Man, y'all better straighten up and fly right, man. Y'all better straighten up and fly right, man. Okay. Descriptions of Yahweh the Bill depict him as a great lion-headed serpent. This is why the, in the Bible, it was the serpent, right? It, 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 there was a serpent, and this is why they call, uh, this is why the children of Judah, their representation is what? Called the lion. That represents what? That represents the constellations. Leo, lion, and it represents the constellation of Ophiuchus, the serpent. It's all celestial, brothers and sisters. It's all cosmic. Break it down. Okay? Boom. Um, for which reason he is sometimes called Azriel uh, or Ariel, Lion of God. This is a draconic, this is a draconic image. 
meaning the Draco, the dragons, the reptilians. Okay. And is found on, on some Gnostic gems and scrolls. This indicates that some magicians of the Hermetic tradition were using the image of the Demiurge as a talisman, as the architect and controller of the material cosmos, the Demiurge and his archons would be logical forces to appeal to in order to create effective change in the world. Well, if, if, if I got to think about this. Do you, would you want to appeal to something like this? The head man is complete. We have been remade by Yaldabaoth in the image of the seven archons who created and enslaved this world. Would you want to would you want to appeal to that for a better world? Not me. Shit, not me. Boom. This horrified many Gnostics, but Origin nevertheless was able to access access these incantations used above and the frequency of the lion serpent image in the Hermetic text and talisman shown shows that Origin was not fabricating the idea that some renegade Gnostics rejected the Pleromic model choosing rather to serve the Demiurge than to resist him. What the Bible says, resist the Demiurge and he will flee. The Bible says resist the devil. Demi, er, Demi and devil says start with the same D-E. This is how you know Saturn is the devil, Demiurge. Okay? You got to resist the urges of the material world so that you can gain the riches of the spiritual world, my brother. You can't have it both ways. You got to have it one way first, and then the other way comes second. So you might as well start your spiritual journey now. Go on your spiritual journey now. Earn the riches of the earn the richness of the spirit now, so that the richness the richness of the material world won't infest or indoctrinate you or or, or poison you to their realms. Okay. Boom. In summary. Saturn had a powerful influence on the formation of Gnosticism, though the various Gnostic movements, uh, um, so the various Gnostic movements vary considerably in their view of the nature and role of Saturn slash Yaldabaoth, aka Yahweh. It is evident that the it is evident that Saturn is evident that the Saturn deity was connected with chaos and that he was understood to be an architect and builder. Remember, the Freemasons call him the Grand Architect. All right, and builder of the material realm. It is associated, I mean, it's associated celestial heavens and the inhabitants thereof. The Demiurge was also believed to interact with humans through magic, but also through religious traditions, such as just Judaism, and Judaism is Christianity, people, and to seek to cultivate positive relationships with humanity, right? Right? Okay, wait a minute. If it's so positive, let's get to it. Boom. These, this is what, if it's so positive, then why is this the description of it? This is the, the Indian description of Saturn, right? Um, and they say his up in the in the in the uh in the Indian Sanskrit text, it says his description as being brown, having brown unscrutable eyes so we know that satan's aka the demiurge black is a black it's a black thought concept and this is why his this is why you can tie him to the earliest his earliest incarnation his earliest incarnation is set there was no earlier incarnation of the devil before Set. Set is the first devil. He is the first devil because he committed the first major crime was what? Thou shalt not unalive. And he unalived his own brother. Henceforth, the story of Cain and Abel was borrowed from that story. Okay? Boom. Here we go. He has unscrutable eyes. He is strong, but has head, but his head hangs down and his limbs tremble. He is tall and has thick, rough, and dreadful hair and nails and teeth, which are discolored and broken. He is mean and very erasable. His actions are evil, accustomed to hatred. He is malicious. He is a malicious master in his black garments. This is why judges and this is why all of the celebrities be wearing all black all the time. In his black garments and looking like 
thin and lazy. He, he's, I'm sorry, his garments and looking like thin and lazy uh, has abandoned joy. His essence is of a sinew. A sinew is, a, uh, is basically like a, a slim vein, a skinny vein. Okay, wait a minute. The Lord Saturn is tall, black, long limbed, and emaciated. Once again, he's black. Once again, it's a black dog concept, which ties him to set. Because Yaldabil, aka Saturn, is a Roman Caucasian concept of set. Saturn is the Roman, Saturn is what the Italians call set. Okay? Boom. And remember when they said uh, that the Italians are the chosen people? Well, I didn't get to that point yet. Wait a minute. Lord Saturn is tall, black, long-limbed, and emaciated with reddish brown eyes, large teeth and nails, prominent veins, and a sunken stomach, a long beard, matted locks, and profuse and a profuse, coarse, stiff body, stiff hair. He is lame, and his limbs are rigid. His constitution is cold and dry, intensely harsh. He is cruel in authority, and his gaze, which is directed downward, is utterly terrifying. Saturn is lord of the sinews and nerves of the West, of Saturday, and of the constellations Capricorn and Aquarius. He is also known as the slow son of the shadow. The angular, the black, the endless, the end causer, the all devouring, the steady, the controller, the famished, the emaciated. Remember in the Bible, when God, uh, when in the Bible they said the devil goes to and fro seeking about whom he may devour? Think about it, people. He's seeking about whom he may devour. He is called the devourer. Let's get it, let, let, let's break it down. Time. Saturn is said to be ancient, old, eternal, as you will remember the Greeks in particular calling him Kronos, the synchron the, the syncretized, they synch and synch sorry, they syncretized him together with the personification of time. This connection of Kronos to time is not merely Greek. The Romans acknowledged that Saturn was a divinity of time. Okay? Boom. He is, a, he is a being of trauma. Saturn is a source of injury. You ever wonder why you be watching TV? Y'all ever be watching TV? And the only thing you can see on TV is these fucking commercials about how if you've been in an accident, call this lawyer. Or you take this medication and you take this medication for an injury and you do this for an injury and you do that for an injury. Remember, a jury is a group of your peers that is set to judge you. An injury, come on now, let's break this word down now. He is the source of injury. Almost every culture which recalls Saturn considers him the great malefic. Malefic means evil, y'all. Saturn is known as the great evil. Saturn hurts people. He causes pain and suffering. Remember, that's when you suing somebody, when you're suing somebody in the court, and one of the ways you get money is for what? How much pain that you suffer, for pain and suffering, right? He causes pain and suffering, and the text suggests he enjoys causing this pain. For the Islamic and Roman magicians, there is nothing redemptive about the trauma brought by Saturn. Saturn's injuries, uh, uh, sorry, the Saturn deity inj injures because it can injure. It, that's it. He injures because he can. How many people, how many times you've seen in the movie where the serial killer was just killing because he could? Where the, 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 the grape man was graping women because he could? Whether the whether whether the, whether the chest of the whether the chest of the child man was doing that to the children just because he could no reason at all just doing it because I can okay um, Saturn injures because it can injure or perhaps because it likes to injure or because it injures compulsively 
the Indian tradition agrees that Saturn causes great harm, but tries to find some meaning in the suffering. <laughs> How many, uh, what they tell you? What they tell you? What, 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 what do they tell you? You got to find meaning in these tragedies. Learn the lessons from your loss. Learn the lessons from your pain and suffering. No pain, no gain. That is the slogan of Saturn. No pain, no gain, nigga. You're going, why you think when they sacrifice, they got to, they got, when they sell their soul, they got to do something painful. It's painful getting that rod up your butt. When them boys run up your booty and, and, and they do the booty cheek ritual, and, 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 when, and when you say so to the booty cheek ritual, when they run up in your, when they run up in your rectum, that is painful. When you do the sacrifice ritual and you and you sacrifice one of your relatives, that is painful. Come on now. That's crazy. The Indian is um the fine meaning in the suffering, even if the suffering results in death. Celtic culture, like Indian culture, connects the trauma Saturn inflicts to his black gaze. That somehow. The act of Saturn seeing a person causes injury. Ooh, damn. Damn. Nigga just look at you and cause. <laughs> this nigga just look at you and cause injury. Nigga. <laughs> golly. Better by golly wow. Okay. Overall, this aspect of Saturn is the most hated and feared of all his traits. Saturn is pain. No pain, no gain. However, all three great cultures also agree that Saturn's trauma can be predicted and mitigated. Oh, so they always tell you that warning comes before the destruction. Man, y'all better, boy, listen, boy, listen. Nigga, say your hand so mighty that it can click off the live. <laughs> Get out the live. Don't kick him out of that live. Let him be a troll, please. Let him. The trolls got a role too, now. Nah? The trolls got a role too in Great Mother's grand uh, grand plan. In every instance of Saturn, there is a profound connection between the the deity and the darkness. Darkness can be black, gray, or sometimes cobalt. These symbolic colors are echoed in the color of the deity's clothing, skin idol preferred offering um, pre preferred offerings and sacrifices and a description of the deity's nature one should wonder what does darkness signify in terms of semiotics darkness is usually connected with night death taboo the unknown and the chthonic realms darkness is rarely a positive indicator of a deity it can be so much more often, I'm sorry, it can be so, but much, it, it can be so, but much more positive. So meaning this, darkness is rarely associated with positivity, even though there got some beings that are associated with darkness that are straight positive. That means that's, a, that, that's called an exception to the rule. Every being, every deity that is associated with darkness is not negative. Okay, because darkness isn't an, isn't an only negative trait. Okay, let's get that clear. But often, more times than not, the darkness is indicative of negativity. Okay, but much more often, darkness is indicative of sinister energies. More importantly, in those cultures described in this book in detail, classical Indian and Islamic. The color black is absolutely chthonic. It is connected with the underworld and with negative forces. Even the images of Saturn are connected with darkness. Be it through the obscuring of his face by the toga or the darkness of his idol, a black obelisk or cube. The color of the black cube. The color of the black cube. Okay. Let's, let's break this down. Saturn is deeply connected with maiming and imprisonment. Now you know why that, now you know why, you know, 911 is a joke. Now you know why with the pol now you know why what the police really here for. The police really here to maim you and imprison you as an homage 
uh, as a homage to Saturn. Ooh, and all. In all of the in all the cultures noted here, the the deity is either injured, or lame, or chained in some way. His movement is impaired. Simultaneously, he is the god of restraint, limitation, and chaining. You wonder why rappers gotta wear chains? You wonder why you gotta put your dog on a leash, aka a chain? Hmm. Okay. The reason for the maiming or chaining, curiously, is often related to some conflict. Saturn slash Kronos is chained in adamantine fetters. Now, what is adamantium? Adamantine. Adamantium is the same metal that flows through Wolverine's veins. Ain't that something? Who would have thunk that Wolverine was pain when Wolverine was a symbol of Saturn? Because of the because of the chains, because of the because of the adamantine chains and fetters that tie him down. Sani is wounded. Sani is the Indian name for Saturn. Okay, is wounded. While Zuhal is lame without reason. And Tezcatlipoca's foot is replaced by a black mirror or serpent. Remember. Zuhal, Sani, and Tetzcatlipokas is all three aliases for Saturn in different cultures. The classical tradition goes the furthest by banishing, remember he is the god of a thousand names. These are just three of his 1,000 names. Okay, the classical, that, that, this is why the Bible says when he gets let off the chain, he'll be let off the chain for a thousand years. And this is why they say a thousand years a thousand years to man is nothing but a day in the eyesight of God. It's all representing Saturn and his thousand names. Okay? The classical tradition goes the furthest by banishing Saturn to Tartarus, the black ne netherworld. Um, let me see where I'm, I lost my spot at. The black netherworld beneath the world of the dead. Saturn's chains are themselves used in magical spells as a device used to restrain other people. Saturn's limit, Saturn limits people, enterprises, nations, and forces of nature. This is why everywhere we go in America, they got something called a what? A speed limit. Told you. Do you do the speed limit? Do you obey the speed limit? Nigga, that's a form of worship in Saturn. See what I'm saying? I, man, listen. We'll never stop at red lights at night, nigga. <laughs> we'll never stop at red lights at night, nigga. <laughs> Two letters of P and a J for all my flights, nigga. Two letters, yeah, man, I don't listen to no speed limit. That motherfucking speed limit say 70, I go 77. Okay? The motherfucking speed limit say 15 in the neighborhood, I go 25. I swear, I never do the speed limit. Speed limit say 40, I go 50. I ain't never, ever do the speed limit. And I, I swear, it's rare that I stop at red lights at night, nigga. <laughs> I swear for God. I swear for God. I swear on Papa Joe's Saturn Holy Bible. <laughs> I promise you. Okay? Saturn limits people, enterprises, nations, and forces of nature. Okay? Boom. Um, let me see. It is well known. Uh, Bob, 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 there's peculiar verse. Uh, there's a peculiar verse in the Quran which says, "And they say there is nothing but our life in this world. We die and we live, and nothing destroys us except time. And they have no knowledge of it. They only conjecture." Muhammad is said to have later told his companions. Do not curse time, for time is Allah. Bismillah uh, rahman rahim all you old Islamic niggas. Gotcha. Gotcha. Allah is Saturn. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me let me put on my camera. Okay. Okay, I just have to show you something right quick. 
I had to show you that. I had to show you that work right quick, boy. Don't play no game with me, boy. I'm gonna show you these receipts. Boom. That's in the hadith. Prophet Muhammad said in the hadith, "Do not curse time, for time is Allah." In English, it sounds as though Muhammad was simply attributing the power of fate to Allah. But in Arabic, the verse infers that the deity whom the Arabs revered as time was the original chief deity of the Kaaba. The, remember, the Kaaba is the black cube. Time is an entropic force that eventually destroys all things, even stars and suns. As noted previously, Saturn is considered an agricultural deity, but this is primarily because he is the harvest time, the reaper, which brings an end to all things. This is connected to his death aspect. Boy, look. Boy, look. Boy, look. I'm done. Nigga can't obey traffic laws without worshiping Saturn. I told you, it's everywhere. The name, of, the name of this video is called Surrounded by Saturn. This is the name of the video. You can't, listen, I don't care what you do. And you wear Nikes, you are worshiping Saturn in some time. You can't, I got me some Nike Air Max right now, bro. Saturn. I got a Whirlpool, I got a Whirlpool washer and dryer. Saturn. Speed limits. Saturn. You can't, you can't get around it. This is his world. They told you this. They try to show you now. They told you this, but I'm gonna show you this. Okay. Damn, not the Nikes. Yeah, the Nikes. The Nikes ruined the Nikes. Look at the Nikes programmed your psyche. <laughs> uh, the Nikes programmed your psyche. Shit, it don't matter. Go get, I'm getting go find some Pumas. This is the Saturn too. Shit, it don't matter. Adidas, Saturn. All day I dream about sex. You know Saturn. That's, 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 come on now. All right. Saturn is a disruptive being. No less so because he is a projection of the primordial chaos. His energy is not conducive to a normal, healthy society. And now you know why the world all messed up because Christians and Muslims run the world. And now you know why the world is unhealthy. Now you know why the world is not, not normal. Now you know why the world all messed up because they are giving their energy to the being of primordial chaos and his energy is not conducive to a normal, healthy society. The Saturnalia best, uh, the Saturnalia best demonstrates the wildness and social revolt that Saturn's presence brings when it is unrestrained. Man, bruh, bruh, you wonder why it's a crazy world? You wonder why it's a crazy world? Huh? Ooh, ooh, wait, 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 Tresty. Stop, Tresty. Stop, stop, but stop. Putting the pieces of the puzzle together, Tresky. Tresky. Nobody told you to put the piece. Nobody told you to do that, Tresky. Tres you did it all on your own, bro. If the Illuminati come knocking on your door, bro, that's on you. I ain't got nothing to do with the Illuminati. He put that on his own. I did not tell Tresky to do that. I did not tell Tresky to put that together, okay? I did not tell him to do that. He put that on his own. And he got the Saturn Cube. And he got the Saturn Cube as his, uh, as his icon. <laughs> He got the he got the cube as his icon. That, that nigga, that nigga, he already he put that together himself. Illuminati. I did not tell him that. I did not reveal that secret. That's on him. Okay. Inky is a oh man, God, yeah, baby. What is going on in the world today? What's going on in the world today? I didn't do that, Illuminati. I, I'm telling you, Illuminati, that ain't my fault right there. Everything on my fault. That wasn't my fault right there. He put that together all on his own, Illuminati. Okay? Golly, man. Golly. Bro, y'all, you wasn't supposed to do that one, Tresky. Tresky, you was supposed to leave that. You want to keep that to yourself. <laughs> you was supposed to keep that to yourself, Tresky. Damn. All right. Wait a minute. We getting back into it. We getting back into it. Coldness. You wonder why you, you you wonder why that Antarctica and that ice wall and they talking about we got we guarded by an ice wall? Saturn, cold nigga. In several traditions, Saturn, Saturn star slash planet is said to be cold. 
This is referring to his essence or humor, according to the medical wisdom of the Greeks and Indians. Coldness can be a reference to age, to sluggishness, but also to the darker half of the year in the northern direction. It is curious that the winter solstice on December 21st falls in the middle of the week of Saturnalia and that the festival is celebrated in the coldest month of the year. December is the coldest month of the year. In the Indo-European mythology, the predominant belief was that the initial state of the black primordial chaos was cold. They tell you that space is very cold, right? Okay. And even after the appearance of the cosmos, the cold continued to be associated with darkness, the north, and hostile forces, aka the Ice Age. Hmm? The Ice Age man, okay? Cold is associated with death because when your body dies, it gets what? Cold. The chill of the grave, the underground basements, mines, room. and that's where they have all the rituals at, huh? They had the rituals in basements, they had the rituals in underground mines, they had the rituals in underground ruins, underground tunnels, underground caves, and remember, it's called the underworld. What is the underworld? The under, the inner earth. The underworld is the inner earth, people. If y'all didn't know what the underworld really was, the underworld is the inner earth that is under the world, literally, is literally under the world, and it's cold. Cold train. <laughs> Ain't no soul train, nigga. It's a cold train. All right, but it said, remember, Saturn not only causes suffering, right? But he also brings social unrest and turmoil. Saturn does not merely trouble individuals, but also entire regions, even the heavens. Several of the traditions relate that the other planets fear Saturn and that he disrupts their powers and operations. Saturn's chaos is not always destructive, however, as the Saturnalia failure, as the Saturnalia festival was not considered a hateful or negative thing. It was genuinely celebrated. Saturn sometimes exhibits a certain gallows humor, it is said, as shown well by the body and ribald humor of Baron Samedi. And now you, and so when I read that, it reminds me of the movies when the bad guy be doing that laughing and the bad guy, something evil happened and the bad guy laughed, I'm going to blow up the world. <laughs> that, 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 that dark humor, that, 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 that dark, evil, cold, negative, hateful humor, just that negative, evil laugh. <laughs> that shit right there. Yeah, that's what that remind me of. That's what that remind no, <laughs> that nigga Jay Hard laughing at that. <laughs> that would that remind me of. You feel me? Like, what the what the world? What the world is going on with you on? Boom. I wanted to get to this right quick because this is very important. Because you see a lot of black people, and you see for because I've never seen this when I was uh, coming up. When I was coming up, I'm a little bit older than most of y'all that's watching this. But when I was coming up, you never really heard about no worship or no ancestors, boy. Well, when I was coming up, you ain't hear about, boy, you couldn't, but when I was coming up in the 80s and 90s, you couldn't, you couldn't find a bobble of wild, or you couldn't find a bobble of wild to save your life. You couldn't find nobody rocking no Orisha back in 1985, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1990. You couldn't find nobody talking about no Orisha or no ancestors in 1990. Tupac was the main, Tupac was the, Tupac was one of the main people talking that black conscious stuff, and, uh, he ain't never mentioned nothing about no ancestors. But for some reason, as of the late, as of the last, as of the last 10 years, 10 between the last 10, 15, we're gonna say last 20 years, 2004. We're gonna say from 2004 to now. Right? We're gonna say from 2004 to now, you've been hearing a lot about these ancestors. Ancestors, the ancestors, the ancestors, the ancestors, right? Okay, boom, let's get to it. Ancestor, this trait is curious, Both, but both Islamic tradition and classical tradition identify Saturn as an ancestor figure. 
Oh, so that's what y'all be doing when y'all be talking about the ancestors? Y'all be really giving homage to Saturn? I didn't know that. Wait a minute. The Romans held that Saturn is an ancestor figure of the Italian people, which the Gauls echoed for themselves in identifying Saturn as Dispater. Wow. The Greek Kronos mill incantation addresses Kronos as ancestor and the Islamic incantation to summon a manifestation of Zuhal addresses him as father and Lord. Our father who art in heaven, Saturn be thy name, <laughs> Yahweh be thy name, Set be thy name, whatever name you want to go, Jesus be thy name. This suggests that several of the cultures, Greek, Roman, and Arab. Now remember, these are the three cultures that run the world. The Greeks, the Romans, and the Arabs are literally the ones that run the world. You ready? I'm about to show you right now. America is Rome. America is ran by Rome. Where's Rome located? I Italy. And where's the Vatican located? In Rome, Italy. Okay? So we know the Romans run everything. But the Greeks, why you think when you come over here, all the colleges, in order for you to get into the real Freemasonry and the real secret society and the real Illuminati, the real skull and bones and all that, you got to be a part of one of the Greek fraternities. Okay? And remember, when you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, guess what that is, y'all? That is not an English system. That is not a Roman system. That is not a Greek system. Google it right now. The American number system is Arabic. Google it. The American number system is Arabic. So literally every single time you hear the word 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 359, all oh, that's Arabic. So the Arabs run our numbers. The Romans run our letters. I mean, sorry, sorry, sorry. The Greeks run our letters. And the Romans run our society. Ooh, the Trinity. The three-head hydra. The three-head hydra is the Greeks who run our alphabet. Remember, Google it. The English alphabet, the, the American English alphabet is Greek in nature. The American number system is Arab in nature. And the American culture system is Roman in nature. So Greece, Rome, and um, Greece, Rome, and Arabia, Saudi Arabia, run the world. It is the Trinity. Literally, you won't know, you won't know the evil Trinity. They got the, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, well, well, well. but you don't want to know the evil trinity? Greek, Rome, Greek, Rome, and Arabia. Arabian night, Arabian day. Remember that song? Come on, man. Y'all got to wake up because y'all sleep. The people that really run the world, nigga, why you think the great, why you think the Arabs could come over here and just get a corner stove out the blue? Just, just come over here. Miss Bill Rahman Rahim got me a corner store. You wanna buy that that again? You wanna buy you wanna buy some uh <laughs> you wanna buy something from the era? <laughs> yeah. When you gotta go to school, you gotta when you gotta go to school, you gotta learn. Oh, you gotta learn the English alphabet. No, what part? What, what, no, no, no. Let, let's get specific. You ain't gotta learn no English alphabet. That ain't no English alphabet you learning. That's the Greek alphabet you learning, boy. And the Greeks stole their alphabet from who? The Egyptians. The Greeks stole the alphabet from who? The Egyptians. Let's get into that. That's a whole, that's a whole nother, uh, 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 that's a whole nother life. The Greco-Roman Arab, the Greco-Roman Arab connection. Who run the world? The Greeks, the Romans, and the Arabs, nigga. Everybody else is second five. Remember, and the Romans, and the, when you talk about the Jews, the Hebrews, you're talking about Rome. You're talking about the Romans. Remember, remember, in the story of the Bible, let's go to the Bible. Let's go to the Bible. Who governed the Hebrews? Who sacrificed and put Jesus on the cross? Not the Hebrews. The Romans did, buddy. Who ran the Hebrews' countries? Right now, Israel. Who really run Israel? You think Israel really run the world? No, America run Israel, boy. You're talking about America is Rome. Rome is Italy. Italy is the Vatican. Vatican is Catholic. Catholic is the Pope, the Black, White, and the Great Pope. Partner, let's get this shit clear. 
let's get this shit clear before we start misconstruing who really run this shit, bruh. And they just puppets, because they all got to worship who? The black nobility, black po the, the black people. And you will never see them running the world. You don't you, you see them running the world. They just run, they run the world. They run the world subconsciously through culture. Black people run the world subconsciously through culture. We ain't got to run the world through the, we, we, we robot the Greeks. We robot the Romans. We robot the Arabs. But the whole world worship black people. The Greeks worship black people. The Arabs worship black people. And the Romans worship black people. Okay? So understand who the Romans answer to, black folk. The Greeks answer to, black folk. The Arabs answer to, black folk. But who are the puppets? Greeks, Romans, Arabs, bro. And it says it right there in our alphabet, our number, and our culture. Our culture is Roman, our alphabet is Greek, and our numbers are Arab. Don't play with me. You don't want me to start putting dots together because I'm going to start making niggas throw away their religion. You're going to start making niggas throw away their religion. Somebody said, true, all over our calendar even, July and August, hence Julius Caesar and August Caesar. Thank, come on, bro. Come on, uh, come on, Creatrix. Don't don't play Creatrix. You already know you tied in with the Illuminati. You already know you Illuminati to your body, Creatrix. We already hey Illuminati. I did not tell Creatrix to reveal that secret. That's on her. That's on her. And, and y'all do her. Look, I did not tell Creatrix to reveal that. Okay, Creatrix revealed that on her own because she was you know she wanted to add in on the pool of revealing the secret. But I did not tell Creatrix to reveal that. Okay. Just like I didn't tell Tresky to do the Inky and the Nike thing, okay? I didn't tell Tresky to do that. All right, now, let's get back into this shit. This suggests that, the, that several of the cultures, Greeks, Romans, Arabs, identify Zuhal as having a divine connection to them, not unlike how Zeus and Odin are thought to have been ancestor figures to famous lines of kings and heroes. It should be remembered that while the Arab text addresses Zuhal as father, Arabic often uses the term father and mother for grandparents. Saturn is not a father deity so much as an ancestor deity. Okay? That is to say that his cultists did not address him usually as father like Christians address him as God the father. Rather, Saturn is addressed as an ancient and orrery ancestor. Perhaps this term of address is used to make the terrifying entity more approachable and in the hope that Grandfather Saturn will prove more likely, prove more kindly than not. Though admittedly, this is akin to Lovecraft's cultists using the term of address Father Day God. That would have said, Father Day Day God. <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> uh, hoping, to human, hoping to humanize an inhuman deity. Hoping to humanize an inhuman deity. Okay? The Black Cube. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We getting to that pressure, man. Like, we might have to, I might have stopped this shit for part two, bro. Hold on. Hold on, bro. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting too long-winded. Hold up. In several of these cultures discussed Saturn's physical presence in this world, his idol, if you will, is said to be a black stone, a.k.a. rolling stone, a black cube, a.k.a. a game cube, a, or an obelisk. And we know we see the obelisk all around Egypt, all obelisk all around America, everywhere. The current idol of Sani at one of his prominent temples continues to be the black stone. Even now, if I'm not mistaken, didn't they have a gang? Like a gang called themselves the Black P-Stones or the P-Stones or something back when the gangs were starting up? They had a gang called the Black P-Stones or, or some kind of stones, Black Stones or something. That's how you know that gang culture is just a, a Saturn worship, right? The Kaaba itself, which was originally an icon of the time deity, is another prominent example of the black cube. Significantly, the black stone at the heart of the Kaaba is said to be black iron, fallen from the stars, which, according to Islamic lore, makes Saturn uh, makes it Saturn by definition. 
by when we make huh, hold up sorry we might ask why the Saturnine deity would prefer a black cube or obelisk as an icon. So why does Saturn prefer black cube or obelisk as the icon? The answer one might suspect is related to the earlier statement that Saturn is a remnant of the primordial chaos, which was cut severed from chaos when the cosmos surged into being. The cube symbolizes the cutting, AKA masonry, cutting that's that stone masonry, right? The cutting in that, its straight edges and angles are clearly artificial and non-natural. A black cube, you know nature don't make cubes. You know that, right? Nature don't make cubes, especially black ones. Let's get that clear. The cube, let's start there. The cube also represents the maiming and constraining of Saturn and the prison dimension Tartarus to which the deity is confined. The black cube is simultaneously the prison and throne of the dark god. Ooh. God damn, how your prison is your throne and your throne is your prison on some shit. That's crazy. That, it's crazy when your prison is your... When, it's crazy when your throne is your prison and your prison is your throne. That's crazy. That's crazy. Undeniably, Saturn is a Catholic figure and all his symbols suggest as much, such as his covered head, his scythe, his insistence on black offerings, and his associating his association with the underground. This is why this is why sacrifice is one of the ways to get into the to the occult groups because that's one of his main things: death. The very text that identify his areas of influence indicate that he is to be consulted on matters related to the dead. In Indian tradition, he is the brother to death, Yama. And in the Roman and Greek tradition, he rules over Tartarus, the darkest, most hostile part of the netherworld. In Celtic myth, Balor's gaze causes instant death as the Sanis in Indian tradition. Likewise, in Vodou tradition, the Baron is the chief spirit of death. As noted previously, the Roman Saturn, black clad, cowled, and bearing a scythe is the origin of the Christian myth of the Grim Reaper, not because Saturn was a death deity like Orcus, but because, Saturn's, because Saturn represents time, which destroys all things. Saturn may not be death personified, but he clearly has a connection with the process of dying and with the underworld itself. Saturn in his guise as a planetary spirit or intelligence also appears in connection with medieval operations of necromancy and black magic in the grim war tradition. Okay. Um, and that go back to the black cube when he was talking about right here, the black cube. Uh, the symbol or the emblem of the black cube appears in many contemporary art and media projects, often as a symbol of alien menace or alterity. So there go that alien stuff again. If y'all talking about that alien stuff, y'all talking about Saturn. Why do you think when they show you the unidentified flying object, the unidentified flying object is in a disc like a ring, like the ring of Saturn? Mm -hmm. uh, explain that away. Explain that away, student. Doc, you really have taught me a lot about occult knowledge in ways others don't. You really a great teacher. My old YouTube name was Tri Clipped It. I've been here for a while now. Appreciate you. I appreciate you, my brother. I appreciate you. Boom. Here we go. Examples include Clive Barker's Hellraiser cubes and the Leviathan deity itself. Even a Google search for black cube shows an extensive list of corporations that use the black cube, AKA like black rock. Remember that black rock? Black rock is like run, run the world. As a symbol are actual black cubes that are installed around the world. Other more alarmed minds have suggested that the prevalence of the black cube phenomena is a subtle sign that the cult of Saturn remains alive and well. Okay, man, man, it's crazy. It's crazy. Hold on. 
And y'all, man, I see, look at this, the sovereignty. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, uh, uh. I'm almost done. I'm about to be done. All right, boom. One of the fundamental traits of many religious systems is the idea of the cosmos possessing an aspect of sovereignty. So remember all the Moors? How the Moors be trying to get you to become a sovereign. Become sovereign. Become sovereign. You get your sovereignty. No, because that's called sovereignty. <laughs> get your Saturn. Get your Saturn on. Get your Saturn. Become like Saturn. Become like Saturn. Become like Saturn. When McDonald's announced Cosmics, ooh, I realized that even McDonald arches are really a ring broken in half. Man, big Joe. Illuminati, I did not tell JoJo to put that together, Illuminati. Okay? You can't blame that one on me, Illuminati. Like, some of this shit, you can't blame one on me, Illuminati. They coming up with this shit on their own. I didn't, I didn't even know that one. Damn. I was, see what I'm saying? It's, 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 so, it's so overwhelmingly prevalent and all over. You can't, man, you can't name, you can't figure out every single secret. Some secrets are meant for you to figure out. Some secrets are meant for others to figure out. But I promise you, Illuminati, I did not tell Big Joe, 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 Joe. <laughs> Joe, 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 Joe. <laughs> I did not tell Big Joe, 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 to uh, put that big cosmic, the, the cosmic ring and the arches. I didn't tell him to put that together. I did not tell him to put that together. Do not blame me for that one. I will not take that charge on that one. Okay, this is to say that within the cosmos and perhaps on different scales within the cosmos, there is an actual principle or law of sovereignty, just as time and gravity are also laws. Sovereignty can be understood as the cosmic claim to rule legitimately. Okay, it is very clear that in many myths, different divine races battle to control the world or the heavens, that is an example of the cosmic battle of sovereignty. Those entities that are usually worshipped by religions have taken possession of the principle of sovereignty, and those monstrous and frightening entities that wish to take it away are thought of as demons. Sometimes it is the monsters that have the sovereignty, as in the case of the Aztecs, um, Tezcatlipoca, or sometimes sovereignty can be granted temporarily, as in the Saturnalia Cronia festivals, sovereignty can also be lost as in demonstrated briefly during the Easter vigil, okay? Saturn is remembered as a sovereign, but he is not the current sovereign of the cosmos. Ooh, that's pressure. That's pressure. Saturn is remembered as a sovereign, but he is not the current sovereign of the cosmos. He is a displaced and defeated ruler and rules now over the prison realm in which he is confined. I told you those rings around Saturn ain't rings, people. They're prison cells. Okay? Because he is a displaced ruler. God, they ain't give me chills right there. That's why they so big on the sovereignty thing, because their boss, their leader, is now is no longer is a is a is a displaced sovereign. So they're trying to get you to sign up with the sovereignty so that you can be displaced just like their leader. You won't be displaced like you won't be displaced and be uh, you won't be a displaced sovereign like like Saturn. Go to the Moors and sign up for the sovereignty ritual. And watch how displaced you become. Okay, wait a minute. He is confined. Nevertheless, primordial entities are immortal, and Saturn especially is said to personify the process of time. If the Saturnine deity is understood as an actual chain god, it is reasonable to assume that the deity wishes to be free and that certain parties would very much like to arrange the freedom or escape of this particular entity. So, is the Moors getting us to be sovereign a way to free Saturn from his chains by enchaining our souls to his sovereign rings? <whistles> Pressure bus pipes or creates diamonds. I'm just coming. I'm just I'm just talking, bro. I'm just talking, bro. Damn. One might wonder that 
one might wonder what Virgil intended. Oh my God, what happened to Virgil? Every time I read that name, I, it's just, it, that song just popping in my head, bro. Um, wonder what Virgil intended when he wrote that when he wrote that uh, this Latin thing right here. The New World Order is born, and now justice returns. Saturn reigns. Saturn's reign restored. Of course, this return to power would not be un would not go uncontested. Here we go, y'all. In most mythologies, political and social instability is said to reflect the chaos of the divine order. The gods do not reign unchallenged. The gods do not reign unchallenged. They too must face the monsters and demons of the spirit world. If one accepts that there are spiritual or planetary forces and intelligence that are behind the current historical clashes of civilization, then it is not a far fetch to imagine that these deities, by whatever name, have their own agendas. Deities, according to many traditions, tend to be orderly and stabilizing cosmic entities, yet deities also appear to be jealous as jealous as well, jealous and jealous and territorial and resist the coming of new cultures and religions into their established territories. Such cosmic deities are also very likely to be hostile to forces from beyond the cosmos, that is chaos. This means that consciously choosing to align yourself with Saturn by whatever name, you got a thousand names, by consciously choosing to align yourself with Saturn by whatever name is likely to cause spiritual and social turmoil around the magician who does so. You wonder why Christians get persecuted. They're aligning themselves with Saturn. You wonder why Muslims get persecuted. Aligning yourself with Saturn. You wonder why certain shit be going wrong. Because you aligned yourself with the devil. And the other cosmic beings ain't having that. Man, that's crazy, bro. This is crazy, bro. Screenshot this. All right? Screenshot this. We're about to get into it real quick. Every text of antiquity in the Middle Ages, no matter what the culture, carries warnings about dealing with the Lord of the Black Cube. Warning, warning, warning. You deal with this boy is on your own. I'm telling you right now. That is not an accident, and it is not a coincidence. The Saturnine deity is dangerous and capricious. If tradition is accepted, deliberately attracting his attention without making the proper offerings and showing the proper respect is an open invitation to injury, sickness, and in death. That sounded like marriage vows. In sickness and in health, to death do us part, as long as ye both shall live. Ooh, when you getting married and you go to the justice of the peace, Cause he got the black robe. The black robe represents Saturn. He's a he's a, he's an official of Saturn. And you get married, man. You wonder why them divorces. You wonder why the marriage be ended in divorces. And you wonder why marriage is so fucking hard. You wonder why marriage is so hard. Because you are deliberately attracting the attention of the of the, of the black cube, inviting injury, sickness, and death into your marriage, into your life. If it were not the case, it is unlikely that there would be repeated authors and entire stories that serve as warnings away from the cult of the black cube, <laughs> the black God, sorry, the cult of the black God. There is definitely a Saturn current, a system of praxis that leads to darker, no darker gnosis, gnosis mean knowledge, y'all, and insights that flow from the deity. The same text that warned people away from Saturn also provide instruction on how one can contact Saturn. None of them provide explicit instructions on how to enter the current beyond attempting the various operations to invoke or evoke Saturn. Even the Hindu story of King uh, Savnadula is, uh, is curiously devoid of any priests or Brahmins. The dark man, clearly Saturn himself, simply instructs the king on the details of the puja, which 
the king carries out. Beware, the God of the black cube is a potentially dangerous God to engage with, but deliberately choosing to take up his cause is tantamount to declaring war on the spiritual powers that have imprisoned him or exiled him. Nor is Saturn to be thought as a protector deity because he himself already is a marginalized power. In other words, the Saturn path, if we can speak it in such a way, oh my goodness, cannot be a path of ease because it is a deliberate rejection of the ruling cosmic order. So basically, when you side, when you side with Saturn, you side against the great mother. Cosmic order is the great mother. When you decide to rule with Saturn, you say, Mama, F you. I'm going with Saturn. That's on your body. That's on your body. Nevertheless, Saturn causes, the Saturn cause is not hopeless, not by any stretch. Da -da 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 -da. Greeks, festivals, da -da 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 -da. Saturn, in fact, appears only to have an established modern cult in India, also Haiti. Uh, it's just talking about all of the all of the uh, places where Saturn is widespread, and he has an international cult. Y'all can screenshot that one and read it for yourself. Do, 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 do. Screenshot that. Hurry up, click. Okay, gotcha. Boom. But also in continental Europe, for example, the early 20th century saw the rise of German Thelemic society as the name Fraternitis Saturni, the Brotherhood of Saturn. That's what the Freemasons really are, y'all, the Brotherhood of Saturn. Y'all won't be technical. This particular lodge, lodge, okay, Freemasonry, continues to operate today and has received some ap academic attention. It is believed that the Saturn, the Saturnine nature of the lodge is rather more one of essence than direct attachment to the deity itself. Lies and garbage. Lies and garbage. But we'll take that. We'll take that for face value. The fraternity and Saturni symbol. Don't that up Illuminati to your body with the impact of a 12 gauge shot. Double eyes, love, no love, straight thug. Okay, boom. The order of nine angels. Remember, they call it the divine nine. Stop playing with me. The divine nine. Hmm. Y'all talking about Saturn's. Angelic, you need to talk about Saturn's angels, and Saturn's angels are angels. Saturn's angels are called archons. Okay, the order of nine angels, a very antinomian hermetic tradition that formed in the late 20th century England, also made use of Saturn as in a causal, a causal symbol. Okay, a causal symbol. They associated the planet with dark forces and suggested that a stargate could be found near to Saturn itself. The order also connects some of their more important spiritual entities to the planet. Bro, the Ona and the fraternity Saturni uh, are but examples of recent esoteric currents which recognize Saturn, at least tactically, as symbolic to some dark spiritual energy or knowledge that has their tradition is thought to embody and their tradition is thought to embody that their tradition is thought to embody sorry both of these lodges serve as an example of ways in which the saturnine current has diversified and adopted its, adapted itself to survive in recent years a third european tradition with strong saturnine aspects is the Saturn? Uh, Saturn. Oh, here goes the depiction. Here goes the depiction of Saturn, aka, right? Eating, eating the you know what. A day later, magician finds out that a relative. Boom. So, boom. It basically showing you how it happens when you uh, start worshiping Saturn. You start worshiping Saturn, and boom. A day later, the magician finds that a relative has died and left him some inheritance or another example an acolyte is in love with a colleague at work he or she attempts a venusian operation which fails they then present the request to saturn the operation succeeds and the co-worker is smitten however the acolyte discovers that the co-worker has emotional issues which have inexplicably been aggravated 
And soon the acolyte wishes he had never done the working in the first place. This is what happened when you deal with Saturn. <laughs> yeah, it start out looking good. You sell your soul. Yeah, we're going to sell your soul. We're going to give you riches. We're going to give you fame, right? And then, oh, now you're getting sued. Uh, well, that, 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 that's what happened to them, huh? They sell their soul. They get the riches. They get the money. They get the fame. And the next thing you know, boom, they're getting hit with a lawsuit. Boom, they're getting hit with a charge. Boom, they're getting hit by a car. Come on now. How many of them celebrities sold their soul and got hit in a car accident and all that afterwards? Right? You feel me? This is the uh, this is the, the, the this is the this is the way of Saturn, bro. Saturn Saturnine magic. Um, it is. Let me see. Let me read what I want. What I wanted to read. I should have just highlighted what I wanted to read out of this stuff because it's a lot. Uh, 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 Saturn is all right. It is evident from all records that Saturn is not a benevolent deity, and very few people have turned to him for help in lighthearted matters. Saturn is not a classical deity of healing nor of charisma or other solar functions. Spells that invoke him in the medieval traditions are two kinds, to hurt someone or to contact the dead. That's it. You trying to get sad on anything? You gonna hurt somebody or you can contact, try to contact somebody dead? These are both very valid examples of Saturnine magic function. Nevertheless, the wider classical tradition as well as modern living tradition are somewhat more ambitious on his behalf. While Saturn is not a god of healing per se, he can be called upon to remove sickness. He is a god of restraint, and so his power could affect the halting or slowing of such diseases as cancer and Alzheimer's. Although exiled and shunned by the other gods, one of Saturn's virtues is a certain degree of influence and power over the other deities. He is able to usurp their virtues for his ends. Now, what does the name Jacob mean? Go Google right now. Google Jacob name meaning. And Jacob name meaning is means usurper. And remember, in the Bible, Jacob is the is Israel. Remember, Jacob's name turns from turns from Jacob to Israel. And Jacob is the usurper because he stole Esau's birthright in the Bible. So how and, and Saturn is known as what? The one to usurp, okay? For this reason, the Islamic and Indian cults both state that when a particular planet fails to fulfill your request, it is possible to then take that request to Saturn. And on the surface, this sounds marvelous as if Saturn is a, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, as if Saturn is a catch-all deity, but that would be a bad understanding of the tradition because Saturn's radiance warps the power of the other planets. An example is crazy. Okay? It warps the powers of the other planets. It's crazy. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. This, uh, this is Saturn is the reaper and his occult requires the death or at least the blood of living beings. Any questions? Any questions? Saturn is the reaper and his cult requires the death or at least the blood of living beings. The sacrifice of animals continues to this day in India and in the Caribbean, where Lord Sani and Baron Samedes respectively received the blood of animals as part of the modern Saturnine cult. Remember, Baron Samedi is one of the names of Saturn. Lord Sani is one of the names of Saturn. Blood is the power and blood makes noise in the spirit world. Blood sacrifice has been a part of the worship of most of the world's ancient religious traditions. In fact, Hinduism, which is Saturnism, uh, and Islam, which is another Saturn cult, maintains blood sacrifice as an obligatory annual practice. All traditional, and remember, to this day, every other Friday in Arabic ran countries are... Uh, um, they still every Friday they chopping off heads every Friday they chopping off criminals heads and and, and, and um, people's heads every other Friday in in Islamic ran countries as sacrifice to Saturn. Go look it up. Beheadings, beheadings in Islamic countries. How often does how often do beheadings in Islamic countries happen? Very often. Okay, 
Um, blood sacrifice is an obligatory annual practice. All traditional African and Afrocentric religions, like candoblee uh, and voodoo practices, animal sacrifice. Even in the Hajj, the great pilgrimage which survives from pre-Islamic times, an animal is sacrificed to Allah, the Lord of the Black Cube. Understand and reinterpret it today as Allah, but known in earlier times as Dar, the, Ab the Arabian god of time, which is who? Saturn. In other words, the Muslim ritual of al id Kir, uh, of al I mean, of id al Kir is a modern Islamic rite based on an ancient Saturn ritual. The modern occultist version of blood sacrifice is a strange thing and is difficult to trace back past the early 20th century. Ooh, that's pressure. The modern occultist aversion to blood sacrifice is a strange thing and is difficult to trace back past the early 20th century. Aversion means staying away from. And the most likely explanation is that the Christian West abandoned sacrifice to the medieval period. Sacrifice was seen as a barbarian practice. So this is why they symbolically do it with the communion and you symbolically drink the blood and you symbolically eat the flesh because they've averted that practice because it was too horrific. Um, it was too horrific to get Christians to believe in God if they had to really kill somebody to do it. So they symbolically drink the blood and they symbolically eat the flesh. Man, this is right here, bro. Nothing but knowledge, bro. Nothing but knowledge on Saturn. There is no room for the respectable colonial cultures in the Saturnine movement. If someone wishes to approach Saturn, they should be aware that this is not a bloodless cult. Saturn expects and demands blood. There is no documented account of any genuinely Saturn cult without the sacrifice of life. Saturn is an aspect of the divine chaos which predates life as we usually understand it and will eventually consume it all. Sacrifice is a way of returning life to Saturn and through him to chaos. Blood sacrifice is symbolically a devotion and faith, but it is also a very real magical act. That said, if someone feels a strong aversion to offering the life of another being, this need not be a barrier per se to the Saturn cult. Many devotees in India today do not offer blood directly, and so there is precedence for approaching Saturn without a personal shedding of blood. But you aren't, you, you're not going to get it. You're not going to, if you go and you go with the fake blood ritual, it's not going to be, it's, it's not going to, it's going to hit different than the ones that's doing the real blood rituals. The real blood rituals to Saturn, you see where they at. They got the $20 million sell your mama deal. But you can do the little, you can do the little Christian. I drank the blood. I, I drank the apple juice and ate the little piece of piece of little ate the little round chip. You can do that. You know, you can do that and see where that gets you. Prayer. Tradition shows that as the Saturn deity is moved by humility, prayer is an effective way to approach the Lord of the Black Cube. This grimoire contains several examples of very traditional prayers, which can be memorized or else recited out loud from a text. Saturn, Saturn's prayer is best perform quietly or silently. This is why in Islam, they tell you when you pray, uh, when, when you do your, uh, when you when, when you pray in the morning time, you do it silently. They only got like two prayers that you do out loud out of the five times a day prayer when you when you pray in the Allah. Most of it is done quietly and silently. Yeah, man. And screenshot this. This is about Saturn devotion and how you can give devotion to Saturn, the black cube. Okay, so screenshot that right there. Um, screenshot that. Saturn is one deity that manifests in different places in different times, but fundamental essence of the deity is the same. And so the practices of veneration and supplication are equally valid wherever and whenever, because he is the being of a thousand names. And no matter which thousand names that you worship him under, What's the name of the book you're reading from? I want to read it so I can do my own research. It's called The Cult of the Black Cube. The Cult of the Black Cube. The name of this book is called The Cult of the Black Cube. And this is not the book right here. See, this is this is this is other stuff. And this is other stuff. Remember, they called him his his original one of his original names was Yahweh Saturn. Okay? So just to show you, Saturn is Yahweh, Yahweh is Saturn. You can't get around it. Can't get around it, Christians. 
your God, the God of the Bible, and his son, Jesus, is Saturn. Now, remember, the reason why Jesus is the son of God, because in the Roman tradition, Saturn came before Jupiter. Okay? So, think about it. Saturn is Yahweh. Jesus, or uh, Jesus, is Jupiter. Okay? They are called the great twins. Saturn and Jupiter are called the great twins. It is said that Jupiter is the successor of Saturn, just like Jesus is the successor of Yahweh, bro. You can't escape the history. You can't escape the history. The history speaks for itself, bro. So, man, I, I, I hope y'all got, I hope, I hope y'all got all y'all could get. You know what I'm saying? I gave y'all all I could give y'all right there, bro. You know what I'm saying? I, I made sure y'all got that meat and potato. I made sure y'all got it in. There you go. I, I ain't even got to say no more. Any questions? We're going we're gonna, to go to questions. We're going to go to questions and comments. Questions, answers, comments. We're going to we, 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 we'll take a quick, a few quick questions, answers, comments, and things of that nature, bro. But I swear to God, on Papa Joe Holy Bible. I don't care. If, I don't care what religion. I don't care what highway you riding down. I don't care what. This world belongs to the devil. And that devil's name is Saturn. This is where the name Satan comes from. Saturn, bro. And you can't escape. You can't escape that. The only thing you can do is get educated to that. And when you become educated to that, you then can become your own God. That's the whole purpose of this. Becoming your own God so that you are not subjected to the rules of Saturn. That's the whole purpose of bringing heaven on earth. The whole purpose of bringing heaven on earth is so that you are not subjected to the rules of Saturn, bro. You don't want that business. You already know that. Suffer, pain and suffering come with that business. Pain and suffering come with that business. You don't want that business, you know. But if you do want that business, then that, 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 that is on you. But the receipt's so pitiful in this one, all you got to do is just go over it and screen record whatever part you want to screen record and put that joint right there. Show that, show, show that to the Christian. Show that to the Muslim. Show that to the Hindu. Show that to the atheist. Even atheism is a form of Saturn worship. Not believing in God is a form of believing in the devil. <laughs> so you still believe in a deity by not believing in a deity. Every which way, up, down, left, right, back, front, east, west, north, south, it's come always, it's all Saturn, bro. It's all Saturn. Look, 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 look you know, I told you. Saturn is the god of a thousand names. Saturn is the god of a thousand names. Now y'all know where I get this from. Now y'all know why I play this. Now y'all know why I play this on, on every line. I told you, I told you, I told you we'd be deathless. We just need new shells from time to time. And plenty of souls to eat. Now y'all know why I play this. Now y'all know why I do this. Saturn, the god of a thousand names. Now y'all know y'all y'all know the y'all know the real y'all know the real ancient name of Saturn, y'all the Bills, aka Yahweh. Y'all know that Yahweh and Saturn are one and the same. Show it to the Jesus goers. Oh yeah, man. They ain't gonna they ain't gonna do nothing but say, oh you're lying. And even though they say you're lying, you still you you still get credit. You still get cosmic spiritual points. And cosmic, you can still get spiritual benefits and cosmic currencies for showing it to them. 
and enlightening them to the truth and planting the seed. Because one day they're going to come across this information again. One day they're going to come across somebody else saying this again. And they're going to be like, somebody else just told me that. Let me go research this, man. I, I heard this stuff about two, three, four times that the God of the Bible is really the devil. And I heard that Satan is really Yahweh in disguise. And, you know, I heard that Yahweh, I mean, you know, it, 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 it goes deep. But here's the God of a thousand names. And Yahweh is just one of his names. Kronos is just one of his names. Uh, but he was known in earlier time, he was known as Yahweh Saturn, the first primal son of worship. Yeah, I just wanted to show y'all that at one point in time, he was known as Yahweh Saturn, bro. His first name was Yahweh, his last name was Saturn, bro. Yahweh is the Hebrew, but who governed the Hebrews? The Romans. That's where Saturn come from, the Romans. That's who governed the Hebrew, the Romans, okay? So, man, y'all make sure y'all go to the, y'all make sure y'all go to the website, Shocker.xyz, get your algorithms, bro. You know what I'm saying? Y'all make sure y'all get the miracle food. Y'all get the miracle tea. Y'all make sure y'all follow my YouTube channel. Y'all see at the bottom, subscribe to my channel at Naama Pleasant. You feel me? Subscribe to the channel. I'm sorry if I was long-winded. I didn't mean to be that long-winded. I didn't mean, I didn't, I didn't mean to, you know, have that many receipts. I didn't think of that many receipts. But now that I'm looking at it, I didn't get a class full, full of around classroom full of receipts. Y'all can dissect this video over and over again. Like, share, subscribe, and get the views up. You know what I'm saying? Get the views up. Make sure you get up and get all of the uh, views up. Show love like book. Make sure y'all donate. Make sure y'all do all that, man. You know what I'm saying? We look, this is it, it's because of this stuff, it, it's because of this stuff right here, why my channels get shut down. It's because of this stuff right here. Why my Instagram gets shut down? I gotta start a new one, man. It's because of, it's because I do stuff like this. Here. I'm really not supposed to be giving y'all these secrets. Y'all supposed to be joining a cult. Y'all supposed to be joining Freemasonry. Y'all supposed to be joining lodges and learning these things on your own through these different means. But shocker, Dr. old duck ass coming on my live telling y'all these. Ancient secrets. Look at these dudes that lost their booty holes for these secrets. These teachings I'm giving you right now, niggas done lost their booty hole in their mouth to eggplants and cucumbers. Eggplant cucumber salads. People done lost their people done lost their whole butthole to egg, eggplants and cucumber salads for these secrets I'm giving you, bro. I'm giving you this, bro, and I'm breaking it down for you, bro. Man, them people done lost them people done lost their booty hole and and, 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 and lost their manhood to learn this shit. <laughs> you feel me? You feel me? Like real speech. All of the links are in the description of the video. All of the links, all of the links to everything is in the description of this video. All you do is hit the description of this video, go down, and they got nothing but links um leading you to where you know wherever you want to go that's that shocker doctor. But think about it, bro. These dudes, these dudes had to give up the chong chong. These dudes had to give up the cho cho. These dudes had to give up the ocho cinco. These dudes had to do the modern, these dudes had to do the reverse Mardi Gras mambo. These dudes had to reverse cow, these dudes had to do the reverse cowgirl to learn what I'm giving you. These dudes, bro, these dudes, bro, bro, these dudes had to eat the glizzy, like Lizzy. For what I'm giving, man, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you. And then when they finally learn the secret, I, I bet they be like, man, I lost my manhood to learn this. <laughs> no, why? I could have just researched on my own, God damn it. Ah! And now they go get, and now they go get, now they gotta go get tattooed all over the place. They gotta go get tatted all up. They gotta go get tattooed all up just so they can feel like a man again. Just so they can feel like a mannequin challenge. <laughs> the mannequin, the mannequin challenge was really a man again challenge. <laughs> them people, them people have lost a poo shooter. Pew 
pew, 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 pew. And people done lost their poo shooter for these secrets. <laughs> Here goes Shaka Dollar just revealing the information. Golly. <laughs> Man, it's crazy. It's crazy, bro. It's crazy. Next time we're going to... Uh, oh, the next video I'm bringing, Doctor Strange Part 2. We're going to break down the doc. If y'all haven't seen me break down Doctor Strange Part 1, y'all make sure y'all go hurry and get caught up on Doctor Strange Part 1. Go get caught up on the symbolism of Doctor Strange Part 1, all of the Saturn symbolism in Doctor Strange Part 1, and then after you get caught up on the um uh, Doctor Strange Part 1, what what it is Sunday. Sometime you know, sometime in the very very near future, I will be giving you Doctor Strange Part Two, and that Doctor Strange Part Two gonna do what it do. It's gonna come full circle with that Doctor Strange Part Two. Then I got a few more man. If y'all got any movie suggestions, if y'all got any movie suggest, if y'all got any movies y'all want me to break down, put it in the comments, and I'm gonna break it down. I'm going to break it down. We're going to bring the movie to Pound Town and we're going to beat it up. We're going to bring the movie to Pound Town. We're going to beat it up. We're going to gonna beat all the juice out that mother. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna tell you. We're going to get it in. But if y'all got any movie suggestions, let me know. If y'all got any uh, TV show suggestions, any commercials, anything like that y'all want me to break down, let me know. I'm going to break it down. We're going to get it popping and it's going to be lit. Period on everything. You know what I mean? Until then, y'all already know what the business is. Hit me up later. I'll check y'all later. Y'all already know what it is.